listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. <laughs> it's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. I'm going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On the big, nice, burgundy snowboard. Okay, here we go again. We are back at the bomb hole, which is presented by Pub Beer. For another episode of the show. Now, first things first, buds, how are we doing? So good, my dog. How are we doing over here, Dirks? Uh, I don't even know what day of the week it is. <laughs> I'm just stoked to be at the bomb hole. Well, I just got to add, uh, we basically <laughs> just talked for about 15 minutes. Uh, we already did half of a podcast, and I forgot to hit record, so we're doing take two right now. <laughs> from the top. From the top. <laughs> it happens. So let's just, let's just start from the beginning and uh, tell the people... Actually, before we get into that, I'm going to do a little intro for mm-hmm. people that are unfamiliar with who you are. Uh, Dirks was a pro snowboarder for a still for a really long time. Still is a ripping snowboarder. Uh, then he turned his career towards being a tattoo artist, um, which will cover all that stuff. But at the time when he came into snowboarding, he was the snowboarder we needed. He always brought that punk hell child attitude. He didn't give a shit. His video parts had antics. He made snowboarding seem fun, all while dropping some serious A grade. Hammers. Now, uh, we're going to talk about Dirks' career, but first we got to run it back to, to where you're from originally. I grew up in between Sandy Welch's area off 26. Very, very close. A couple miles from Wendell's skate park, which I feel most of the listeners will probably know where that is. Uh, it was a pretty awesome place to grow up. Snow heavy during the winter and really awesome summers. And, and so was, you're able to snowboard year round. Yeah, that was cool. Like to To have that, but I didn't know that at the time, you know, I was young. I got into snowboarding probably around eight or nine, and just thought that was a normal thing. So we met, when you got on Academy, we we met at the gathering uh, a few years later, but I'm curious as to how you went from being a a fun-time boarder to to getting on Air Blaster and Academy and stuff. Uh, Yeah, it was just a lot of the, uh, things just sort of aligned. Jesse Gronkowski. Mm. Yeah. From, uh, <laughs> from Air Blaster, he had lived. He had, I think, recently moved out to Oregon, and Air Blaster was very fairly new, and they were doing some contests and stuff up there. And he was just a fun person to ride. He was an older guy. We were the young kids, and he could tell we were all having fun and cruising the mountain in a in maybe a different way, and kind of taking different lines and all this stuff. And he just started doing those the board game contests or whatever. And me and my friends, we all did that. So we just created a relationship through that. And then I think through Air Blaster, they had some mutual reps or something that worked for Academy. And so that's how I made the connection and met with Chris and Stevens and all the other people that were on the team. It was probably around when I was, because Air Blaster relationship started pretty early. Maybe I was 16. And then Academy started to blossom like 18, 19, around that, those years. Being a Grom from Hood, you yeah. must have just seen every pro snowboarder dude, roll I, through town, but you didn't even know how cool it was, huh? Well, I don't think I did, dude, because Hood kind of, it was like after all that. Uh, like, I grew up, like, the only pros I really saw around were, like, Daryl Mathis. And it was like, I feel like right before him, there was a lot of people, and then he stayed close to it. He's still out there. He's a good yeah. friend, good, great friend of mine. But yeah, it's like, there wasn't, it, it almost like we, it felt like we missed a gap. Uh, or whatever. Like we had to play catch up. Me and my friends were like, "All right, this is cool. People are doing this. Why can't we do it?" There wasn't a big scene for snowboarding at that, that time. Yeah, we just had a tight posse, which was super fun. I always wondered who did those too. cribs as you drive up. Like, who's the lucky guy who has this crib? Oh yeah, like in Govey and stuff. Yeah, or, yeah. It's cool. Well, uh, we also have to ask. Uh, leg bags were massively popular. They were yeah. super popular. Yeah, you were rocking a, one, huh? I rocked one. Yeah, for sure. What'd I you still keep, have my original keep, one that I got. What'd you keep in the bag? Uh, probably prank stuff i remember i did have fake dog poop that we would we would take out of it and throw in the lift line and watch people be like Ugh. <laughs> i should probably still do it because it's pretty funny just a full prank kit yeah just a prank bag. kit yeah we weren't smoking weed or anything at that age but the yeah. first hipster sack yeah <laughs> hipster sack yeah. awesome yeah it's like a what do they call those things at the wedding? The cumbersome or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. But it's like for your leg. <laughs> for your leg. <laughs> and they're usually bright colors too. Like the cumber thing. It's like the cumber bun. Yeah, cumber bun. Yeah. It's like a cumber bun for your ankle. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's those things, those, are, those great. Are, awesome. are those great. They're awesome. I think they're coming still, back. They should too. bring like, them back. Oh, they Flood's are. wearing one oh, again. And like, yeah. I think, they're I coming people, back. Yeah. Bring the leg bag back. It makes sense. Yeah, they're cool. They would come what back. about high backpacks for popping for a while? I'm rocking one right now. Are you? What do you got in there? I had 
a screwdriver and a tiny wax scraper. Oh, there it is. It's easy. Nice. Yeah, we made those at Tech Nine back in the day. Yeah. Originally they were high to, back backpack. Yeah, to hold weed as well. Yeah, I've Tech Nine for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Granger <laughs> had like a can of tuna or sardines tuna. or something in them. Something random. really yeah. just snacks. Just showmanship. What do you got in there? Well, I got sardines. Some tuna. I got sardines. <laughs> Uh, another thing that's cool thinking about the air blaster era, especially in its infancy, like if you look at snowboarding, it was very serious. Like you had your super pros and they're untouchable and they're larger than life. And then like air blaster was kind of the first to come in there and just be like, keep it like not take themselves too seriously. Yeah. Just had to wipe that like stereotype out. It's like, you don't have to be this crazy Uber pro like it's snowboarding should be for everybody. It's just fun. You know, and they promoted that, which, and they still do, which is awesome because sometimes people get so wrapped up into being like the serious job. It's not serious, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. No. You're sliding around on a slippery stick. Like, take a breath. It's awesome. It's fun. Yeah. Travis so, Parker and Jesse. Yeah. They're they the started, best. It kind of just, I think yeah. Travis was kind of bummed on how serious things had gotten for I'm his sure. Career, right? Yeah. 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 I, there may or may not be a uh, container of Air Blaster gear on the bottom of the ocean i heard this summer but, oh really but i think they pulled through and shipped and all that so Ouch. props to them Ouch. for making it a yeah. shipping issue a little yeah. shipping issue maybe a couple companies actually. i mean yeah when you're working with large numbers like that i'm sure that it was some happened. sort of that covid sucks, debacle so. and the the border closing and not enough employees so the boat was stuck out in the water yeah no one could get their bright pink jumpsuit in time yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but it made it. It made it. That's awesome. Let's uh, jump into where I met you because that was when we were both at uh, riding for Academy. I think at the gathering. Yeah, the and, gathering. And you guys um, met at a porta potty. Yeah, we, we did. <laughs> yeah, we actually did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but th those early Academy snowboards days were special. I mean, yeah, it the was, team was awesome. It was really cool, man. It it felt like it, it blossomed out of nowhere. It started as this really tiny thing, and all of a sudden, it had this awesome team of like. An experience for me too, being just like I never got to travel as a kid. I was just always Mount Hood, and then all of a sudden I'm in Colorado and meeting you and Stevens from the East Coast and people from the Midwest and Chad Otterstrom is on the team. It's like it it was surreal. It was really cool to have that. I think they did two or three gatherings that I attended. I'm sure they they kept doing them, but they were like super super magical, awesome times. Mm -hmm. Super fun. We used to call Chad Otters from the Godfather. Oh yeah. I mean, I think I still do. But yeah, I think he's, he's still, still the Godfather. Referred to as that. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Shout out Chad. Out. Let's give him. Let's give him the super air horn. Yeah. yeah. Still ripping. I mean, we should. There's still. Also, you have like Casanova, who is just on fire. He Jonas was making Mitchell some lot. serious contest money, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was during the crazy contest. It was like him and Gooner, like yeah. head to head, right? Just just cash and checks. beanies and bikinis and like all sorts of like <laughs> yeah, I, ran, I, I did that one one time and i got second gunner beat me and i was like oh whatever i'll take 5k cash <laughs> yeah it's so funny i remember they cash. tried to, they tried to like make me fill a w9 and i was like ditching town i was like <laughs> you're out <laughs> yeah i'm out they gave me like a, they gave me like a lunchbox full of cash i'm like whatever you're a mistake Dude, that's the sickest Dude, i think i remember be, i remember being in vegas <laughs> like 40 percent of the money <laughs> yeah i don't want to do that i'm out yeah this was this around the trade show time or yeah, it was trade one? show time yeah I, I also remember this is a very distinct funny memory i have we were in vegas at one of the hotels and they had big toilets and i remember your uh your feet didn't touch the ground you're taking a shit <laughs> <laughs> like looking under the stall and i'm like dude i hate a tall toilet it was so bad you can't get no leverage to like squeeze it out you're like uh, just floating around i wonder Not why good. they had the extra tall toilets dude it's some places like just NBA do it's wack. They they the keep it baller it's like yeah. kind of like this nice it's like you're hotel. up on this like huge throne yeah. <laughs> Tina Bassett used to own a house here in town where it was an NBA player's house, and everything was custom made, tall like that. <laughs> Counter like the counters like come up to everyone's <laughs> necks, and I'm sure the toilet was the same way. You would microwave never on the ceiling, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> everything was just up high like that, built for a draft. Amazing. Uh -huh. Well, then I I also remember along that time we both were filming for Chad O's video and Redness called Keep Talking. Keep Talking. Yeah, that was a that was a great era. Dude, I have a new old stock copy of that in my closet. Never opened. Sick. It's the only one I have, but I'll, I'll probably open it later. Mm -hmm. yeah, you probably watch it online. But that was a really fun era. We lived in... Chad just kind of opened his door to us. And I think I lived in the closet with Jonas Mitchell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds funny, but we were like sharing a tiny space to live there because there was so many people in there. Stevens was there. Mm -hmm. You were there. You Redis guys were all in there. one crib. Oh, yeah. We were in, in Chad's Colorado. house. Yeah. Breckenridge? Uh, I think it was Breck. Yep. Yeah. And they wow. have like a cool like extended like hot tub, so we'd go snowboard all day or like look for spots, and then end up hot tubbing and partying at night. It was funny. I remember living there, and Chad would wake up every morning and go to 
the Breck Freeway Terrain Park or whatever, and we'd all be sleeping on the couch, being like piles of shit, <laughs> and then like he'd just wake up and be like, "Lander guys, and not like, moving till and morning. then just like come back. He'd done like back tens and all kinds of crazy shit. We're still like You're just scratching your head, yeah. not making coffee. <laughs> yeah, we're like trying to think about a, like a wooden rail to hit. Or something. <laughs> we're arguing or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying to look for some fucking just trash Summit County. Yeah, spot. like Summit County is not the best <laughs> the best place for spots. Yeah, let's, no. Let's admit. <laughs> we, made, we found some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Legendary. Yeah. Sidebar. I remember uh, one of the, the girls that um, I believe Casanova was dating. Uh, we wanted to fuck with her, me and Jonas. So I got a, a rolled up. I got a power bar, a brown a chocolate <laughs> one. And, and I, uh, I like spun it up and I made it look like a piece of shit. And I put it on the... I put it like on this, I wiped down the, the toilet seat. So it looked, it looked like it was like, it was clean, you know? And then I put like a chunk of the power bar that looked like a piece of shit and some toilet paper. And then it looked like there was a log on the toilet. And, and, uh, we were like, Hey, come upstairs, come upstairs to, to Casanova's girlfriend at the time. And I was like, she walks in. I was, she's like, who did this? Who did this? Who did this? <laughs> and I walk in, look at it real close and then just took a bite of it. And, and she's like, Oh, 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 Oh. And she was like dry heaving. Cause she thought I ate human shit. Casanova was kind of a wild guy too. Yeah, huh? Nova was awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, still it. I, I went on a that. trip to South America that he was on, and we got back to the airport, and he was kind of like toward the tail end of his career. Yeah, got back to the airport, and he got off the plane and just left all his gear at the airport. Just and just over took it. off because he was just so over it, and just order new shit, whatever, move on. Just free pile. Yeah, free pile. Yeah, someone take it. I'm over it. Over. This. Sometimes, yeah, that's a real feeling when you like go to an international airport yeah. and you're like coming home, and they like. You're at gate A, and they, they want you to go to, like, gate X. And you're like, what? It takes 45 minutes. And you're, like, switching hands. Yeah. Like, I'm so over this. Just like, leave the About gear. to leave it. Yeah, like, take my favorite thing out of there and be be done. Come get it the next day if it's your town. Why yeah. not? True. Well, I think we should get into uh, a guest question that kind of pertains to the Keep Talking era. The guest question is presented by Kappa Snowboards. I've been riding the Outer Space Living board. How is that board? It's soft. It's it's a jibby That's board. That's that, the purple yeah, the purple one. I think purple's my favorite color. You're looking good on that. Thank you, thank you. I've been testing a bunch of their boards. I'm going to try the DOA, uh, but that thing's been kicking ass. On if I, if you're looking for kind of a jib rail board type of situation, it's soft. The flex is amazing. Uh, definitely impressed with the the quality of these capitas as I switch over. So I tried the black somewhere to death. Amazing. You're feeling it? Yeah, definitely. What um, do you like about it's it? Not, it's not like your type of board for the steel. It's more of a mine's a 58. Yeah. So it's an all mountain board, but the flex, uh, the shape, it's incredible. And it's the black look, dude. Yeah, like black on black art, matte, yeah. matte gloss effect. It's it's just dope. It's kind of more of a piece of art. I almost want to hang that thing on the wall. Love it. And again, the guest question presented by Capita. This one is from none other than Andy Wright. Here we go. Wow. Hi, bomb hole. It's friend of the pod, Andy Wright here, and I got a two parter for Nick. Nick, the first time I ever met you was 15 years ago, back in 2007. Within an hour of meeting, we just shot what was going to become a cover of Trans World on the infamous Jesus Rail in Denver. My question is, I never really got to hear the backstory of this rail from you. Like if this was a spot you'd just kind of stumbled on that day and decided to hit, or if it's something you'd been looking at for a while and just saving for the right time. Would love to hear your words about the session, and for the record, I was so scared that day. It was such a heavy spot with consequence. I didn't really know you at all, so I had no idea what to expect. And considering how gnarly it was, it just, I don't know, there was no margin for error. I remember we were losing light and getting kicked out. Everything just felt wrong, and the red flags were starting to get hard to ignore. But your filmer, Brian Redness, talked me down, and of course it worked out. So yeah, your side of the story on this would be awesome. And the second part would be, if this statue at this rail was inspiration for what was your best Halloween costume ever, you know the one. <laughs> Thanks, I'll hang up, and I'll listen off the air. Awesome. Andy, thanks for the question. That's Andy awesome. very one. serious on that one. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It is a good two-part question. I love this. Uh, I remember that was probably a couple weeks into the Colorado trip for Keep Talking, and we had gone to this spot a few times. Jonas was hitting this. Jonas Mitchell was hitting this. Uh, I want to say it was like a triple or a double kink, like concrete ledge. Yep, they had a ledge at the school. Ledge at the school, and I didn't want to hit the double kink ledge. I was, it wasn't really my cup of tea at that time, so I walked around the school the first day we were there, and found that thing. And I think the only closets that I had seen um, prior to it were maybe Benny's in Moment of Truth. Mm. Like the, the crazy one. one, the backside 50 one mm -hmm. that he does. That super one is timeless. nuts. It's that so is, crazy. Okay, closeouts weren't hitting at that point. Closeouts weren't really hitting that yet. And I was like, I could, I, 
pretty sure I could do this. I, I wanted to do it front side because it was facing to my left on the outside, but it, there was a definite consequence. Like there was this huge bronze Jesus statue, like just a little bit off to the left of the rail. So if you came off like a little bit early, you could land on this holy statue. Land <laughs> right on basically Jesus. Basically it spikes it too. It's like a spiky Jesus. Yeah, it was a spiky Jesus. And his like fingers were up. It was like metal. So, and it was pretty tall. I remember it was at least... What was it two stories? Yeah, or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The closeout was two stories. Closeout was two stories. Yeah, and uh, I just decided to start setting it up. And I was like, once I set it up, I'll get a better. You know, everyone does this. I've set up multiple spots in my life where I don't even end up hitting it. I'm like, ah, I gotta walk away. But kept me busy, kept me warm while everyone else is doing something else. So I set it up, and while I was setting it up, Jared Hottie, he wanted to jump on backside fifty fifty, and I, I had to tell him I was like, no, I was like. No, dude. I'm, you, I couldn't let him. You might like, have saved his life. Too yeah, I was like, this is my spot. I, I'm already freaked out. I don't want to like a session on this or anything, so let's just do this. And I do remember it getting pretty dark, but once it was all set up, I think it only took a, I think I hit it maybe three or four times. Probably three times. The first time you like overshot the little bump in the landing. Yeah, I like completely like tacoed in the landing. Mm -hmm. like, And so we moved the like little landing pad just a little further out to make it so I can, because you got to ride away with speed. Yeah. It just looks funny if you like stop <laughs> make so yeah especially from like that high up um yeah and then it ended up being a cover that winter which got me to where i wanted to go which is crazy i mean keep talking was a good like foot into it all but that opened up a whole nother topic that we're going to talk about i'm sure with these days because mm -hmm. then joko joe carlino hit me up probably pretty quickly after that cover came out because it was like the following winter Mm -hmm. to film for a new project so I'm guessing cover of trans world if andy yeah it was there. cover of trans world yeah and i didn't know it was going to be a cover of trans world until like it pretty much came out i'm sure we can get it from andy and pop yeah. it up yeah, on the screen photo. right yeah. here i have i'm I, interested to see spiky jesus spiky G he, you know it's i don't Is know it not in the, not it's in, in the, photo? the photo but it's kind of like backlit it's uh, okay. if you watch keep talking the clips there so yeah it's have, in the we'll video the clip, clip up. for andy the second part of your question uh it's actually my favorite halloween costume i ever did i did it two years in a row because it kind of pisses people off which i think halloween's good for that i dressed up as jesus on the cross but i made the cross a shot ski so <laughs> <laughs> every bar that we'd go in i'd take the cross off my back and like lay it on the bar oh and fill up the shot glasses <laughs> and surprisingly not one bar like turned us down they're like this is fucking crazy like, <laughs> you had a, a, G, a cross i had a cross shot -ski. bearing on my back and yeah. i was wearing like a like a Pampers diaper, and I like I used the Air Blaster Ninja suit that had like the nipples on it. Oh and wow! I splattered like this is pretty bad, but I splattered like red puffy paint all over it, and I I went to the park and made like a rose like crown of thorns, <laughs> everything. I can pull up a photo for that too. I we, can send we you would this. love to get that popping up. I, I went. I have a really awesome photo. I went to a Halloween party and randomly ran into Spinny Spencer Schubert, and he was dressed up as Cameron in the all pink, <laughs> and, I, and I'm Jesus on the cross. So I have that photo. I can give you guys. Wow. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, Cameron, what a great costume to do this. <laughs> Nothing like yeah. Halloween where people are just getting absolutely cross-eyed and they <laughs> yeah. look ridiculous. It's so yeah. fun. And, like, and then like you love, I love looking over and you see your boy in like a deep heart-to-heart -heart <laughs> and he's dressed like a fucking Teletubby or something. <laughs> yeah. Or like trying to hit on a girl or For something. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so great. It's the best holiday. Amazing. Well, before we get into uh, the next phase of your career where you, where you started filming for Transworld and getting on K2, I do have to rewind back to, I feel like the two notable things that like skyrocketed your career at a young age, like the hand plant on the, on the porta potty that ended up going in the mag. That was a big mm -hmm. deal that you went and directed that. And then, and then the cover, like that's, that went from like, kind of, you went, it seemed like it was pretty quick from like relatively unknown to being in the trans world video. Yeah. I had a, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I had my cover before I had a checkout. Yeah, yeah, Which is that's crazy. It. Yeah, yeah, like the fall. I think it was the following issue or two. Then I got a checkout. The Robbie Sell shot. Mm -hmm. That Up usually up. doesn't happen. Yeah, so that what was kind of board cool. were you on the cover, Academy? No, uh, I was on an Academy on the cover, and then my checkout. I was riding a Tech Nine. Oh, sick. Yeah, because it was like kind of. I think the year after that, I, me and Academy, we had a falling out because I got invited to do this big video, and you know, complications. People need money, and they couldn't front it for me, and it was just no hard feelings yeah just, i just had to figure something out so i was riding a slew of different boards for like a half season roams capitas solomon's k2s until i figured out something that would that would work for that season you almost got on solomon you came to the solomon catalog shoot I that did, first yeah. year like it was it was like he was gonna sign with solomon yeah i almost did but i i don't know i just it didn't i should have if i could go back in time i think i would have because i've seen the way solomon treated 
their riders, and it looks like they've treated them better than yeah, what like, my yeah. experience was. Longevity. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't know. I was young, and I was like, oh, other people were telling me this and that, and K2 it's was growing tough, at tough that point. Right? It's a tough call, yeah. yeah. So who was the TM, and, and how were they getting, like, at, what were they, they were, like, kind of tracking you down and trying to get you on? Of K2? Yeah. I think his name was Hunter, but that's the thing that I had an issue with K2, too. They never stuck to a team manager. Every year while I was there, it was like always someone new or like then we didn't have a team manager. So the whole time I was there, it was really hard to like build a relationship with a company. And they were up in Seattle. So I would go up there for like catalog shoots and stuff because it's not far. But yeah, it was like as soon as I'd start establishing a, a relationship with a team manager, they'd like leave. And there'd be like a whole new crew of people. Like there was a lot of people that were always there, but the people that I dealt with were always changing. Mm-hmm. I think they finally now are getting in their groove. Yeah, it seems like they got yeah. a good groove now. Yeah. Finally, it's a ski company, focused, so they got a long team manager. <laughs> in. Yeah, so it's going to change. Yeah, true. Yeah. So going back to to that, uh, then they basically how it works is Joe Carlino hit you up to be in in uh, Transworld, right? Yeah, he called me. I don't know how he found my number, whatever, but he introduced the idea. Was he like, "Hey, Nick, yeah. Joe, <laughs> this is Joe Carlino, it's Joe Carlino. Oh. I saw your cover. I'd love to have you on the video." It's crazy you get a cover, and then it's just like opportunity knocks. Then it was right? go. It was yeah. pretty crazy. It was like go, go, go. And I was, I took it really seriously. I was like, "This is my shot. I got to do this. This is it. This is it. I got to do it." But I didn't have a board sponsor yet, and so Joe was like inviting all these people that had like money backing them and everything. And shout out to Joe. He yeah, give him a shout out. He fronted my bill for the first like two months that we were filming wow. for Transworld because he wanted me in the video really bad. He was like was, a young Jess Kamara at the uh, time, huh? It was really cool, man. I paid him back, obviously. Like he he's super organized. He kept everything, and he's like, "All right, when we figure the stuff out, we gotta like we'll do it." So yeah, I was riding a bunch of weird, different not weird, but different brands and different boards, trying to figure this all out. I think in that video, I have shots on multiple different companies of boards oh, I always trying yeah i think i'm on uh, capita rome and k2 oh damn i didn't mm-hmm. notice that yeah uh going back to that that part you ride to uh you ended up having first part uh-huh. you wrote to needles and pins yeah needles and pins ah uh, yep. and then uh and then you went to <laughs> do you think uh, i chose that definitely not <laughs> no <laughs> but there is the infamous quote at the beginning of that part that uh still is is referenced all the time today which is what I uh, don't even know what the day of the week it is. Uh, I just know I have to snowboard. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what the day of the week it is. You don't even have to really go by a schedule. You don't have to worry about what day or time it is. You just know you have to snowboard. <laughs> <laughs> Which it still holds up, right? <laughs> still holds up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How do you feel about that quote? It's fine. I mean, being 20, 19, 20 years old with a camera in your face, just like, say something. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm probably just blurting out random stuff. But it's awesome because now I've seen like, Torment Mag made stickers of it. And I have a coffee cup that I drink at home and it has it on. <laughs> yeah, Who made the coffee cup? Torment, Torment Mag. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like well, actually, black I just saw print. that it's online. Like, there's bumper stickers. And I uh, I, I had uh, a bump, a bunch of bumper stickers that Stark gave me. And uh, I offered some to my neighbor. She's just this like, thespian uh, theater lady. And she's like looking through them. She's like, I want this one. And she chose the, I don't even know what day of the week it is. <laughs> it's like on her car. I'm like, cool. <laughs> Dude, that's like you go to quotes.com. That's going to be on there one day. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Famous Amazing. quotes. Yeah. yeah. And then that part was, was awesome. I mean, we should talk about that part because it seems like you were, you went hard for that part. Yeah. I went really, I really wanted it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going on every trip I can. Don't really have a place to live. I'd rather just live out of a board bag and do it. Mm-hmm. I got hurt pretty early in the, in that season though. Like I think on our second or first trip too in Quebec city, I like, tweaked my ankle really bad when I was jumping into the castle wall. I like rode, I did a really nice one that I really liked. And I rode down the wall and there was this like drainage pipe and my back binding hooked when I was riding out on the pipe Uh-oh. and it just like, like twisted my ankle. So then the, the whole season these days I was wrapping my ankle with an ace bandage and then putting it in a boot. It was bad, but it worked. Yeah. Ended up working out and, yeah, got and you, you got first part. Yeah. And that's just, it's so interesting how you went from like, Guy living, you know, in the outskirts of Mount Hood, basically, n- relatively unknown. And then you have, like, keep talking part. And then you're basically in one of the biggest videos yeah, that of was all a, time. I think that was a big video for Transworld. It was their yeah. first snowboard one, right? Yep. Yeah. Did you notice, like, your career kind of took off at that point? Uh, I didn't let it seem that it took off. I was just like, okay, cool. I can just, I can just do this now. 
It's not like I was like signing autographs and like <laughs> waving people down. <laughs> like, I just was still like the same me. I just waving was like, people I just <laughs> out in the Do street. Do you know who I am? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm cut out the deal. window. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was really cool to be in that spot though. And then I got to from the pressure of that though was crazy too because after I filmed that um, first the opening part for Transworld, K two was like really stoked and they wanted me to go do. Like I think it was Mac Dog People. I didn't want to do that. I was like, why don't I have a say in it? And they were like really pushing for me to do people. And I kind of put my foot down because I wanted to like maybe pump the brakes a little bit. I was like, all right, I already got here. Let me do my friends that I like and look up to are all gonna do this new project, Video Grass, Meyer. We don't know what it's gonna look like or what it's gonna be, but I felt like I needed to fit there. Then go with Mac Dog. That was like it's pornographic snowboarding a little bit. I love the old videos and stuff, but it started just to turn into like a little bit of no flavor, maybe like no person. There's a little personality, but not as much as I wanted. It's like it didn't showcase like a person. So it's just like clip, 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 clip. You know, big cinematic snowboarding. Yeah, cinematic yeah. snowboarding, yeah. which I wasn't a fan of. But almost every other rider would have chose or been forced into Mac Dog too. So that's commendable. Well, yeah, I just didn't want to. I got to ask who your early big influences are. Like, what were you into that that made you be who you wanted to be? Are we going like? Favorite snowboarders? I mean, well, just, I, I guess, like, think with the way I'm asking this, we, we're not going to do the MJ shit now. Yeah. But I guess, like, the, you know, looking at, at who you are, the, the kind of punk kid, and you wanted to go towards video grass instead of filming for Mac Dog, which is most people would be like, would not do that. You know, yeah. what, what was pushing you in that direction? Uh, I just wanted something more raw. Yeah. Just a rawness. Like, I grew up watching Scotty Whitlake, Mikey LeBlanc, like, destroyer stuff like that like i wanted that when those, those were kingpin yeah kingpin, kingpin. yeah those yeah. were kingpin yeah. yeah so i just wanted that like edginess rawness feeling like cool snowboard video mm -hmm. yeah i love it well this is a perfect segue for a guest question from the creator of video grass uh none other than justin meyer guest question is again presented by capita snowboards here we go wow you guys finally did it you got little nikki on there um, I just want to say I think Nick is the snowboarder we've always needed. He's the perfect amount of shithead with uh, all the other bells and whistles. And uh, Nick, how's it going? I just wanted to see if perhaps you could give us a good little story about uh, the time you put a sock on your dick and jumped out of a two-story building. Later, dudes. Love you. Later, Mara. That's two guest questions about with Pete Dick in it, huh? Is it? Yeah. What was the other Dick question? Sh shot. Uh, oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Patreon question. Yeah. F shout out Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that trip was all time. That was you were there. Helsinki. Yeah, Helsinki. Yeah, yeah. We the whole video grass crew. That was your uh, Bon Voyage. Yeah. yeah. It was Bon Voyage year. Like, dude, we held down a whole a whole hotel room. They were pretty bummed on us. Like, we had like three or four different crews in there mm -hmm. it was so, we were there for like 20 days or something it was like two satellite crews kind of <laughs> yeah it was so great like someone one crew would be leaving and then the other crew was like getting home from like a night mission or whatever and then we'd all go out and like party in helsinki and it was super fun there uh, at the basement of the hotel there was uh this sauna and me and laurent and a bunch of people would always go down there like every night after snowboarding and <laughs> we started talking about dick sockers it was a company that we were just joking around that me and Laurent could start. It was like a like a leg warmer for your dick, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so dick sockers and Laurent had all these like funny punchlines too. He was like, It keeps more than this warm or like whatever. I don't know. And uh I just I don't know how it happened, but it was like, Oh, everyone was like in the hotel room like doing the thing, you know, that I didn't really ever want to do. Everyone like sits around and watches the whole day again on footage. I'm like, dude, we we were already outside all day. I don't want I don't want to see this anymore. And I, dude, I know exactly what dude, you're talking I just about. Just sit around in front of a laptop, like run it back, run, run it back. back. Run like, one dude, more time. How many times you want to watch see my this shot thing? again? Yeah, yeah. Is it good? Is that a grade? Is it gonna make it? I'm good. Didn't want that. So <laughs> put the ski mask on, and then I put the uh, dick soccer on, and I like walk. I kick the door open or whatever, walk through like everyone's like in front of a TV or monitor or whatever, and the window is open, and I just ejected out of the window into like a snowbank. It was pretty high up. Yeah. Yeah. Meyer said it was like it was like a big drop to like flat. It was <laughs> flat. It was like a snowbank. It was flat. I was like boom, and then when I got down, I landed, I was like oh shit, 
I wasn't thinking about like how to get back into the hotel because I was na- I was naked yeah. with a ski mask on and like this thing over my ball sack. It was like <laughs> a tight little sock thing. And so I had to like climb up the like gutter onto the other like roof that was right there in the snow and then back through the window with like my butt crack out and everything into the window. It was fun. Wow. I think it made it to the intro of Bon Voyage. Yeah. It's like the last clip. It's like, dur, dur, mm-hmm. dur. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty funny. And also, I do remember that trip. Like there was like a, a line of like Laurent or something was like lining up his beers or maybe Jake O.E. <laughs> yeah. People were like hammering. <laughs> we beers. were all doing that. And we got really bummed because the maid came in and took our wall of beer down. And we we're like, no, it was like halfway through the trip. They were like on the headboard. It was like we we're trying to get it to the ceiling. <laughs> so fun. Because yeah. there, I believe it, it's legal to, to hammer beers in cars, too. Oh, wow. I, I don't know if that's Yeah, you can right. drink. But, like, the driver can't drink and can't. drive, but all the passengers, like, I remember, I, I, mean, I think I was maybe driving the van or maybe not, but I do remember, I, I wasn't drinking at the time in Finland, but everybody else on our trip was just, dude. like, Jake always hammering beers the whole time. You get in the van and you're like, am I at the landfill? It's just <laughs> <laughs> this deep in trash. <laughs> you drop a glove that, or something, like, you're trip. not yeah. finding it. No way. Yeah. I love when you open up the van door, like, 15 <laughs> beer cans fall out. It's <laughs> like a complete disaster. Flick it back in yeah some frozen glove you left in there the night before (laughs) a head of lettuce Uh, that's just rolling around yeah because someone thought they were gonna eat nice on the trip or something (laughs) there's some deli meats always or like random shit yeah god that's another cool thing to talk about too because it was like it seemed like from my perspective you started and you're like i'm going to film trans world i'm gonna take it really serious i'm gonna film my big video part and then vg happened you're like this is it. I told. I remember telling Justin, I was like, I want middle part. <laughs> like, Come on, let's bring the antics on. And I got middle part. I yeah. wanted that. I was like, I don't want the pressure of like, because you get the first part, the company's like, he's going to get first or last. I was like, nah, I'm going smack mad. Middle. <laughs> <laughs> middle. It's all good. Like, so keep it, keep Yeah, keep the, keep the energy low. up, too, for the video, too. You need a little something in the middle. True. Well, yeah. your approach has always been so good because I think there's, you know, I I share a similar perspective, I think, as you with the fact that like a video part should be like entertaining, there should be an mm. enter- there should be a degree of showmanship. It's memorable it. that way. So, yeah, it's memorable. Yeah. And you always had shots like jumping out of the fucking window <laughs> naked, or like just being a punk. And, yeah. and what was the yeah like? Wh- why did you choose that kind of oh. avenue? What was your perspective on filming a part? It's more fun. Yeah. Like don't take it so seriously. Like I'm not clocking into a job. It's like just make people laugh. Like, dude, mm-hmm. I've never mean to anybody. Yeah, just just antics are more fun. Mm-hmm. Like, hands down, throw a snowball. Like, yeah. whatever. Yeah, the best is Meyer is like his evilness comes out so much because he's he'll get his lens out and he'll he'll coerce you into oh, doing yeah. something. Like, oh yeah, hey Nick, you should uh, do this. Like, grab you like a sh- like a what are they like the shepherd's wand or whatever. <laughs> This way, <laughs> and you're like, "All right, yeah, that's pretty cool." <laughs> the fireworks, yeah, police station, cool. Let's go. Yeah, you're like four beers in. You're like, you know, what, Myers, and, and he's like evil doctor, like yeah, yeah. loving he's it, loving it. Hoodie cinch tight. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get into another guest question presented by Capita. This guest question is from Hava Fernandez. And I know this is relatively early in your career. We always go in. Not always in exact order of how things mm. went down, but we just bounce around. Cool. But this is a question uh, from none other than Hava Fernandez. Here we go. Hello, Chris and Ethan. Hava Fernandez here. Got a question for Nick Dirks. Nick, uh, once upon a time, you, myself, Jared Hottie, Louis Paradis, and Liam Gallagher took a trip to Lebanon. Um, and the night before we left, we were in Munich, and we actually did a rock, paper, scissors to decide whether or not we were going to go because... Felt a little shady at the time um, after reading the State Department's advisory on the subject. Would be uh, interested to hear your take on what happened on that trip, anything exciting that happened, and um, I think it could make for an interesting story. Outside of that, I hope you're doing great. That little daughter of yours has got to be the apple of your eye. I love you, bud. Love you too, Hava. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. That trip. One one thing before you get into it, you should explain the the how sketchy it was going over the information you had before you went. Like it was advised that you shouldn't go. Before. Yeah, it was. It from what I remember, it was. Uh, I don't know how they describe it, but like in the news, maybe like red flag or orange flag, like not for tourism right now. Like things are un, in conflict. It's dangerous. Not recommended. 
Like if whatever. if something happens in Lebanon, the UN or whatever is not going to come help you. Yeah, basically, is what travel happens. at your own risk. Travel at thing. your own risk type, type yeah. Of place. Yeah. So okay, we good. did we did do the rock paper scissors because we had already had this thing planned because Jared Hottie he had some family members out there that were going to let us stay at their like mountain house up there, which we ended up going, and when we landed, it was, uh, I can't. Yeah, Louis was there too. Yeah, it was Hava, Louis, Jared, and myself. And Liam Gallagher was a, a like about a full day behind. Like he was showing up that night. We got in in the morning from leaving from Munich or whatever. We were at Ispo. Louis just won some silly like ice cube rail jam <laughs> that I was supposed to do, but I just watched on the sideline, which was cool. Me and Jared both watched it. Um, so we landed in Lebanon and we had some time to kill before we went up to like our mountain house. So we decided it was pretty stupid. We decided to like drive into Dahi, which is the city in Lebanon where. There's been a war going on there forever, like with conflict and all this stuff. And we just, we got out of the car and I had this huge, like uh, medium format Polaroid camera. And I was just like red, white, hit, white, redheaded dude walking around with a camera and like a bombed out part of the town, like taking photos. And obviously we look suspicious or we look out of place. And so out of nowhere, these two like kind of armored blacked out cars, like pinched us off, rolled up, jumped out. They had AK, or maybe not AKs, but they all had guns and stuff. And they're like speaking to us, trying to figure out what we're doing. They put us in their car, asked us for our passports and all this shit because we looked suspicious to them. Like, they don't see that kind of, kind of stuff. And so we're like, what the fuck's going on? Like, it, everyone's heart is like, like pumping like crazy. And they ended up taking us to this, like, I think it was called the family restaurant. This is like, it sounds like Soprano style. Like, <laughs> and we walk into the restaurant. They get us out of the car we walk through the restaurant. There's people dining and they're all like looking at us because we're kind of being like escorted by these dudes. They're never mean. They never like showed force or anything, but they're like, you got to come with us, blah, blah, blah. And then they took us to the, I think it was the basement or it was like an annex of the restaurant or whatever where they sat us down at a table. And then they started questioning us all individually to see if our stories would line up or whatever. Like, what are you doing here? And all of us obviously are like, we're snowboarding. We're here. Then they used, at the time you could use Google. So they're Googling all our names and everything. To make sure everything, like, held true. Like, we weren't doing anything suspicious. We were just being dumb and, like, in an area that we probably shouldn't have been. So they, I think they were actually just looking out for us, but they wanted to make sure that, you know, that we just weren't threatening anything on their behalf or whatever. So I remember there was this one time that we were sitting while they are kind of fact-checking our stories and everything, and uh, one of those guys who's like, uh, he was like, can I... Can I get you guys anything or like, do you need anything? And Jared like raised his hand. He's like, I'll take a beer. And like, <laughs> the dude's like, I'll start laughing, <laughs> which was, it was like the first like icebreaker or whatever. And then we we're like, okay, maybe this is going to be like fine. And it was fine. We ended up getting to go, but it was terrifying for sure. And then it, it was like, it probably took a, it felt like eight hours, but it was probably like three hours or whatever while we were like with them, like in their, holding or custody. whatever yeah in their custody basically they spoke english too huh? yeah they did sick but, mm -hmm. and uh and then we got let out and we we're all like tripping we we're like what the fuck and at the time it was like perfect timing to go pick up liam like he was landing at the lebanon airport so we picked him up and we're like get in the car <laughs> we're going to the mountain we have a crazy ass story to tell you and that was it it was a wild awesome time i'm I, happy we took the trip i, I remember though for hava and like luif like their perspective of the yeah they story. had a, the pretty scared like perspective they, they, right like it was scary it, they were like thinking that they were going to lose their lives it was scary was, yeah. it, you, oh, were at, yeah. you were held at a gunpoint sure. right oh, like, yeah, yeah there was this one time where they took us out back of the restaurant i forgot about this and they lined us up like on a wall like a wall like looked like a firing wall they might have been just messing with us or something but i remember looking at the and like jared and we were all like white as a ghost like shaking like holy are we getting executed like what is going on yeah, it was really crazy. But I mean, imagine if the stories didn't line up. I, yeah, like if I'm, somebody said something. We yeah, like do. tried to like bluff a lie or something yeah. for no good reason. Sometimes yeah. people do that. Yeah, for sure. Under like weird. stress. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, it didn't happen. And then there was a so so that happened. Luckily, thank goodness you guys are all right. That would have been yeah, it would have been a terrible start to the and the end to something. Yeah. yeah, and it's you guys are kind of blossoming careers, you and Luif and. Mm -hmm. and uh hava's just fresh getting the solomon team manager job yeah and i remember seeing an edit where you guys went snowboarding and it was edited to the sounds of uh diarrhea basically <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, that, that audio clip is from, uh, so we, we checked into Munich and we're like, yeah, we're going to be in Munich. It's going to be so fun. We got a hotel room. Do we get in the hotel room? I, it's smaller than this. It's like two little beds and it was like complimentary breakfast. They give you like a grape and like a slice of cheese. You're like, what? And then there was, there was a, it, this like glass, like the bed was right here where we're all like hanging out at. And then there was this glass <laughs> door that when you went into the bathroom, the light turned on. So it illuminated like your posture of you sitting on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like no sound barrier it was just like jared and hava like <laughs> <laughs> we we're all just sitting like you had to, there was nowhere else to go you're like right next to it <laughs> so crazy and you're eating that euro food yeah and like our bodies and we, uh, we came straight from vegas too so we did vegas and then we did ispo so our liver and gut were like so rotted it was so fun Wow! <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that was, was real noises. Disgu- Those were real, all right. Authentic. Who, who had the noises. worst diarrhea out of the crew? Uh, it, I think it was Jared. Because uh, Louis, I, go I heard. On. I heard that Louis was like oh. embarrassed because his was so loud and <laughs> Yeah, maybe he was like finding a different potty. But those <laughs> other dudes are like, listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> No shame. I mean, you couldn't hide in that tiny hotel room. It was hilarious. Wow. So small. Also, yeah, so funny that it was like backlit. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like an Austin Powers scene or something. Uh, and then also around that time, you had uh, Skeleton Crew was popping. Yeah, we did. Uh, Skeleton Crew was that year. I think it was the yep. second year of VG mm-hmm. Skeleton Crew. Remember when the they rented uh, all of Bear Mountain? Bear Mountain was so awesome mm-hmm. to all of us. They shut down the mountain for like three days, I think. Yep, and we just. They gave us snowmobile rides to set up anything for us. That was springtime, I think. Jared knocked his teeth out. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh. <laughs> I remember I was sitting at the, I was sitting at the bench below the like a picnic table where we were taking a break, drinking beers with like maybe OE or Laurent or you or something. And I looked up. I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch Jared. And I looked up and just pink, bam, teeth out. You could hear the teeth. I was like. 100 feet away. There's a tooth Tink. mark on the steel. <sighs> yeah. Oh god. I remember it was so funny too. He was like. <laughs> he like I think his first thing he said was like my summer's fucked yeah, <laughs> yeah, <that was> <laughs> <laughs> it's like so I hate or snowboarding sucks my summer's fucked my summer's <laughs> over yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll a, be alright dude yeah and explain what those videos were for people that are unfamiliar <laughs> skeleton crew yeah yeah it was a uh, Evan Lefevre awesome man old friend of mine I actually used to live with him in Salt Lake um, yeah it was kind of this like a uh, way to like showcase maybe just the insider's point of snowboarding. Like, let's throw some industry people in there, and, and not everyone has to be uber pro. Like, everyone wants to get a clip and feel good to be part of something. So, it, I think it was just created out of simply that. Like, let's start something for the snowboard community, and all these photographers can get a clip. And Carlino had some clips. I think yeah, Carlino, Bob Plum, or Ollie Gagnon. Probably Ollie had. Oh, Ollie G had Ollie, heat. Yeah. He, dude, he's he had, had a couple stuff. heater parts. Even mm-hmm. I think yeah. he. Oh, and then Meyer, he almost board slid Red Ledge, right? Or was that Meyer Oli? Meyer? Oli? I, th- I think that was Oli. O- Oli board slid Red Ledge. Sorry. Yeah, I think Oli. that was Oli. Yeah, Meyer had some some heat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's always good. I think that there was, was cool. like some chomp on this inspiration. Yeah, it was it definitely was a- chomp on this. Because, I mean, they created it, but it wasn't something that was not allowed to be copied. Yeah. It's just a good formula for something that it's snowboarding needed. And maybe it needs it again, because is there another thing like that? I don't know. It's a strange time right now for videos. It's, yeah, like, it's, it's weird. It's just weird because it's like a, there's a lot of um, and, and I try to keep up, but I can't, and I don't care. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it was if you think about it, it, it was simpler back then. It's like way simpler. Like guys like me and you is like if you're in one of these videos and you just go film a part, like you're good, dude. I remember going to my local snowboard store and I used to have to beg them to open it because I couldn't afford to buy it. They're like, no, we got to sell this one. I was like, come on, just open it. Like, mm-hmm. We can watch it at the shop, and then we can you can sell it again because I was homies with like the older dudes that worked at the snowboard shop. Is that or whatever. Exit? Uh, no, it was this place called uh, New Release Company in Sandy or whatever. Yep. When I was a Grom kid, like 14-ish, yep. and I would just hang out there if it wasn't snowboarding, like ditch school and be like, I'm going to go like hide near the shoe rack and watch skate videos or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would they open them for you? Uh, they did, yeah. Nice. Once I established a relationship. You get a shop copy anyways. Right? Yeah, yeah, shop copy for sure. Yeah, but those, I think going back to those times being simple. Is yeah, it was cool. You got a video, you got a, a collection of videos. Don't discount the hard work you guys put in. Yeah. You weren't just good. Go out, eh, film a video part. Yeah. You guys were top dogs doing some top dog shit. Thank you, bud. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it That formula is missing, I think. It's like, it's a little oversaturated now. 
Because, I mean, are we going to remember? Like, it sucks that you don't have a hard copy either. Are we going to remember this, like, HTML link? It's in the cloud, like, bro. Yeah, f- what's that? Like, <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, what is the right, damn cloud? That. I'm still yeah, looking for the cloud. somewhere. somewhere like, I don't even know what, what those, uh, Dude, people like, are Bitcoin saying is, that basically. We're going to be living in the cloud one day. Like, There's a metaverse. Our, our heads, Dude. Snoop yeah. Dogg, what already the hell property in the metaverse. Gonna quit P- what are those PFT? What are the things? NFTs. NFTs. I mean, this is a confusing time for us boomers. I don't know what's going on. We're going to download our brains to the clouds and be able to cruise around and own property. That's what they're saying. Wow, that sounds really yeah. fun. Meyer yeah. was telling me all about it, believe it or not. <laughs> kind of reminds me of The Sims. Yeah. Can we just play that on like? PC? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's going to be like. Hopefully not, but But yeah, now there, the there's just is. so many videos. It's like there's like a, a few that are held in high regard, and then there's just – it's hard to keep up with everything where it yeah. used to be – I want to say littered, but it's not littered because people are doing awesome stuff out there. It just it – just, it's a little sad to see maybe that people are putting so much energy and energy and time and – compassion into something that maybe it'll be lost in five years no one's yeah. gonna watch it like when you have a hard copy and you have a snowboard video or a skate video collection it's like boom it right in front of you you can't just look at everything in front of you on the internet i think it's gonna get lost and that was the, that was the thing too we grew up watching videos and it's like i had a handful of videos or maybe more but every one of those good videos i you know you know it by heart Dude, front to back yeah yeah, exactly. before you could even like fast forward, you like put it in, you just have to watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. But Start I to do, finish. I do think that I, I hear kids say like, oh, I watch that part on YouTube all the time. You know, you got to watch something to get hyped. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I, I mean, I'm on YouTube every morning with my daughter drinking coffee. We watch snowboarding. And I'm like, it recommends me stuff. But I feel like maybe after, since it's so quick and easily accessed, as soon as I watch it once, it's rare if I even go watch it the second time. Mm-hmm. Instead of back instead in of the day, like hundred times, hundred times you burn out a VHS of times, or something. Yeah. You're like shit. You open it up, tape it back together. Like yeah. hope your VCR doesn't eat it or whatever. Yeah. True. Well, all this video talk. I think it's time for Uh-oh. you know what, buds. Ooh. Name that video part. Name that video part is presented by Mammoth Mountain, isn't it, buds? Yes, it is. What's going on with Mammoth? Mammoth is firing, as always. Best park in the U.S. right now. I could probably guarantee that. Uh, talk about it all the time here at the bomb hole, but I've been riding Mammoth pretty much every spring for about 87 years at this point. <laughs> Bud's has <laughs> been much. 140, I believe. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, Super Park 1 was about 165 years ago. Yes, and, it was. Uh, Super Park 167 might go down this year. You guys were churning butter, I believe, <laughs> at that. So Yeah, we were in order to eat. <laughs> Up there at the <laughs> Mammoth Lodge. So Mammoth has the best kickers. They're built so well. Their park crew kills it. The steel is incredible. The steel slides, slides. most importantly. You don't want to be on that sticky steel. And then if you're just looking at cruise groomers, it's humongous. Three it's, half pipes? They got three half pipes. Woo! They got what is unofficially called Bud's little mini pipe that he beats down. Beats down once a year for about one day <laughs> a year. <laughs> <laughs> but I wish I could go more. <laughs> well, we're doing a fun little giveaway with Mammoth uh, for Name That Video Part Section 2. What are we doing, buds? We are giving away four Mammoth lift tickets. So if you know the song, not the one that Nick's going to answer, hopefully correctly, but the second one, the first person to comment on Instagram, the correct answer on Nick's thumbnail photo, we, we will send out four tickets and some bomb hole swag dad, right? Yeah, and bring your friends, go up, have a good time. This is your chance. Four lift tickets is a pretty big deal. They're very expensive now. Yes, it is. Okay, so first things first, how confident are you feeling? Zero through ten, Dirks. Uh, 69. 69? Woo! Six to nine. Wow. That might Six be our nine. highest highest one. Six to nine. Oh, somewhere. Six to nine. <laughs> <laughs> Six to no, nine. Uh, I'm going to go middle road here because – you could throw me a curveball. I do know my older snowboard videos, but... You're a video park guy, I mean. Uh, yeah, but I don't... You were just talking about wearing the VHS down yeah, to yeah, the tape it, mounts. So yeah, let, we'll is, see. This but is I do, huge don't have you. the greatest memory. Yeah, this, this is, is, huge, really this is big, big because you just claim that you wore the tape down. You claimed it. <laughs> on a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say what tape, dude. <laughs> oh, true, true. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Caught up in Justin Hebel. Yes. Love, hate. Justin Hebel, love, Ooh. hate. I got it. I you got have... it. Good <laughs> job. Wow. I was pulling for you at that Damn, one. Damn, thank you. I was pulling for you. You knew I watched that mm-hmm. video a lot. 
That one and Burning Bridges were huge for me. Judging by your like your hipster outfit you used to wear God. back then, <laughs> I knew I knew you're a big Burning Bridges or uh, love hate guy. The, the Mega Man boots. Yeah. Uh, wow. So what we have here, uh, we no longer have a cooler, but we do have a satchel. That is a satchel, a tote, wow. if you will, uh, filled with bomb hole goods. You got a mug, you got a hoodie, you got uh, stickers, all of which are available wow. at bombhole.com. Cheddar biscuits, cheddar biscuits, stickers. Thank you. Um, wow, those are awesome. Yeah, going on my fridge. Oh wow, cheddar cheddar bees are going on the fridge. Yeah, that's we're going. Huge. I got a fridge in my garage that's littered with stickers. Love it. It's the kegerator. Um, it's the kegerator. Nice. Yeah, thank you. That's cool. beautiful. Thank you guys. So for part two of name that video part, we're gonna do the the you guys guess it. Um, so here we go. Okay. Ooh. Thank you guys for playing. Have you used that one? Before? Name that video part. I don't think so. How often do people get that right? Every, like, takes three seconds. What people get it right all the time? Yeah, they post. Oh, you oh mean no, 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 like the guess or whatever. Oh, the, the guess? guess? Yeah. What do you think, bud? I mean, he kind of. Like percent, per percentage he, If they don't get it, he'll give them tips. Oh, okay. I yeah. would say, like, actually true without yeah, true, giving them breadcrumbs, if you will. I don't know, maybe 60, 70%. 70%? Yeah, yeah. I'd say that's right. That's I good. used to tee up a little bit, like, meatballs. Yeah, he used to really make it easy on And him. what about the guests that aren't into snowboarding? Like, you have, like. Dirt bikers, or dirt we, did, like we did ten dirt block bike and stuff, or skate. Movies. Oh, you do. Okay, ten block. We did yeah. name that rev limiter. <laughs> so he, he got them all. Uh, okay. It was like what? Perfect. What car is like <laughs> bouncing off the rev limiter? Awesome. All right, and he got them all right. Uh, so yeah, you didn't ball. need any tips. I mean, you just got it. Well, uh, I watched was, that video a lot, and you know what's funny? Before I came on the show, I was like, I'm gonna watch some old videos because I need to. So I was on YouTube and I was like watching a bunch of the Kingpins and even old Mac Dogs like Shakedown. I was like, oh, and then I. As soon as you just like the first song on it rolls, you're like, oh yeah, okay. It's like yeah. a soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I didn't watch that one though. I didn't watch Love Hate and Burning Bridges because I can't find my copies. Uh, like, they might be at mom's house. They probably are. Hopefully. I, I want to run back to what you briefly said. You're like, I'm going to put this sticker on my cooler in my garage. Yeah. My fridge. And I, I know you, you wrench on stuff. What do you got going on in the garage? Uh, I just have a little one car garage, little like, I got a lathe set up, a welder set up, bench, TV in there. It's pretty, a kegerator. It's where I spend a lot of my, like, summertime. And you've done some cool fabrication on, on Harleys and stuff, right? Yeah, like like the older Harleys vintage, like, big twin stuff. Yeah, I built, uh, right now I just finished a 1949 Panhead, which I'm super happy. It came out of a barn up in Washington. Looks crazy. Looks like it, like, it's a scarab, but it works. It's awesome. Is it all raked out in the front? Uh, yeah, it's pretty long. Yep. Yeah, but it's all old parts on it, which is cool. It's, like, barnacle-y. Which mm -hmm. is pretty fun to ride around. This is like shitty, like airbrush skull on it. <laughs> it's pretty fun. You like riding that thing around the city in the summer? Yeah, I mean the city kind of sucks, but if I can get the chance to go on like a couple like camping trips for the summer, it's fun to use those. Like I went up to me and my buddy Brian. We rode out to Cocard's wedding this summer up at Mount Hood and slept in the dirt and then rode motorcycles back. Which that's fun if you can go like super simple, like fishing pole and a tiny sleeping pad. Yeah, just sleep in the dirt. Just sleep in the dirt. Style. Yeah, stay up late and just yeah, be in and out. It's cool. That's good living. I like. Yeah. I like. I think I like the hands on more than the riding. I like to just be busy, like working and stuff. Yeah. So did you fabricate some of the parts? For yeah, for bikes? sure. Yeah. So you know how to weld. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of parts do you fabricate? Uh, I'm, like some tanks and fenders and. So you can weld a tank. Yeah. Damn. So you TIG those things up? Uh, I just use MIG. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay. But I know I, I don't have a TIG welder. My father does. So yeah. If I need to use a TIG, I can go to his house. He lives out on the coast, so it's kind of far. Mm -hmm. And then you also have your Toyota. We got to talk about the Yoda, oh, dude. Coyote Killer. Yeah, the Coyote Killer. Tell the people. We're going to throw a picture on the screen because this thing's beautiful. Oh, it's awesome. I've uh, I bought it when I was 18 years old, and I moved out to Utah with it, and got a job out here. Shout out to Brighton, Jared Winkler. <laughs> Giving me an opportunity. I was probably the worst employee. I was 18 years old, <laughs> fresh out of high school. <laughs> Just wanted to snowboard, but I was really happy to to move out here and be with that little truck. It it did so much for me, and I still have it. I just replaced the motor in it. I've had it for 18 years, or coming up on 18 years. I'm 35, so wow. 17 years. So you've had the same vehicle for 17 years. Yeah. And you flatbedded it. I flatbedded it. It's been in snowboard movies. What clip is it where you drag it up and jump over it? What video? Uh, I think that's... 
What is that? Shoot it's, the moon. It might be or? shoot the moon. It's not Bon Voyage. It was later video graphs. Yeah. It was like the year before May Day or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mikey was there and Benny was there. Bob Plum. It was a fun day. And we got content from it from my truck. Yeah. <laughs> that was like a really shitty, like pressure treated two by six flatbed. But now I, I built like a whole nice I welded like a metal frame with diamond plate, yeah. chrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the cab's still shitty. There's no insulation. There's there's like a hole in the ground. You can see the freeway going by underneath <laughs> it. <laughs> Drain hole. Yeah. yeah. It's that's awesome. A, that's amazing. So I, I think it's cool if you look at the way your brain works because you're not like a computer guy per se, it seems like. I don't do computers. You don't you don't no. do them at all? You don't have one? <laughs> no. But don't then, need one. I have a little one in my pocket. Oh, you just have the phone. Computer. Yeah, that's fine. I can email off that and I don't know. I don't see the need for one. A lot of people I work with like use the iPad Pro and I just don't want to spend the time to learn how to do that. But it's probably it? bad for me because it might benefit me, but I'm just not very like tech savvy. Does your daughter already have a computer? No. H3? No. no. She's on your... your yeah, stuff. she's on our program. Yeah. We, I, we watch a lot of Disney and stuff like that, but it's like the master remote man, you know? Yeah. Dude, yeah. it, it's interesting awesome. with with this uh, with this what we do here. It's like coming into the office. We're talking into microphones. I spend a lot of time like with camera footage and on computers, and and it's actually like pulled me away from working with my hands. Where when when I was a snowboarder, I would didn't like do a lot of welding in the off season. Yeah, you had that and, awesome garage that you yeah, build garage. rails and all sorts I of still stuff. Yeah, wrench on my dirt bike, but it, it's crazy how when I actually get to building something or working on a project or working with my hands, how therapeutic it is. Yeah, it's awesome. You can get like completely lost. And that's the other thing too. It's like sometimes I think that there should be more value put on building things with your hands. It's almost like in our society, your like societal status is always based upon like, what school did you go to? What are you doing? Like, are you... Are you this or you that? But like the hands-on craft shit, like you do tattoos. Not yeah. everyone has a knack for it. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. But it's. Yeah, I don't think it's also computer genius. Under. Yeah. I think it's undervalued. In yeah, it might be a little, uh, and, and maybe it's something that's just dying. Yeah. Which is because we make these things that are just a little too easy for everyday tasks and stuff. Or someone, if you're like, oh, I don't know how to do it, I'll just hire someone else that knows how to do it or whatever. Mm-hmm. It makes you less hands-on. I'd rather just try to be hands-on. Mm-hmm. And if I can't do it. And, th- else. and there's also something really cool to be said too with like what are we doing when we snowboard? You kind of get into like a flow. You're having fun. You're cruising. When you're building with your hands, you get to that same shit. Yeah, you just get mesmerized. Zen like. Yeah, you get yeah. zen. It's <laughs> for full sure. Zen. Yeah. yeah, tune it out. Listen to a podcast. Do whatever. Yeah. Do you do that uh, now that you you're a dad? Do you kind of like prioritize your time to do that type of stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. Nap time is a uh, very sacred time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get three hours. Nap day. time. Yeah, when the daughter goes down for naps, I get three hours to do my own thing. Yeah. Which is maybe catching up on chores or I got a little side project or making a drawing or a painting or something like that. Yeah. For sure. It's definitely prioritized more than like I used to just be like, oh, get around to it when I get around to it. Now it's like, oh, tone in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Oh. It actually makes me more productive, I think. Yeah. How, how to manage your time better. Yeah. Like I got three hours. And you can get three hours, six hours worth of shit done in three hours if all for you sure. got is three hours. If you're sure. focusing on it. Yeah. Yep. Before we go back to VG stuff, we got to talk about uh, pub beer here, bud. Oh, nice. That's a crisp That's crack. Crispy. How is that thing going down? Ah, it's delicious. Nice. Um, like I always say, if you're thinking about getting absolutely fucking obliterated. Or or, or just drinking one or two responsibly. Drinking one or two responsibly. Or yeah. also getting obliterated responsibly. There you go. Just having a maybe a sober driver. Yep. Uh, a friend to look after you if you're uh, going to just go ham. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to get yourself what, buds? Some cheap, fun beer. A pub beer. There it is. So we're going to get into the crap shoot. Here we go. Welcome to the pub beer crap shoot. All right. So how this works, do you have dice in front of you? Um, Where's the dice? I saw They're it. over there. They're in the front. They're in front of the thing. By the salt. So uh, you roll your dice. Uh, the goon gears is six, and then we'll tell you what you have to do. Okay. Do I already roll? Yeah, give it a roll. Okay. Five. Five. Oh wow, this is actually kind of this, this is a perfect uh, <laughs> perfect one. Would you rather have a tattoo designed by Grenier and tattooed by Eastone, or designed by Eastone and tattooed by Chris? Ooh, based off your past graphics, I want you to design it. Oh wow! Like that's a an dude honor. like barfing and yeah. dirting at the same time. You could tattoo it. Yeah. Okay. 
It was yeah. probably a good. I don't. Yeah. Either yeah. Way. I don't know. You're like artistic. If I could background. use a computer, you'd be all right. If I had to go by hand, you'd yeah. be in trouble. If all you right. could do like a photo imprint of a tattoo, and I had to tattoo that, it would be horrible. Actually, everything. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's a good. That's a good answer. Tough. I like it. Neither of us have ever given yeah. a tattoo. So well, all your hand, your yeah. graphics were hand drawn, right? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. That was fun. Fun times making all those graphics. I think Chris would make a pretty sweet one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. I actually have a tattoo from from Nick on my oh, body. Yeah. I have Snoopy. Mm -hmm. Snoopy and, on a chopper or yep. dirt bike or something. And yeah. my uh, brother's kids love Snoopy. That's awesome. So they love that tattoo. Yeah. Now let's fuck it. Let's talk tattoos because okay. we'll go back to snowboard career. But but what happened? Why did you decide to transition out of snowboarding and into getting tat tattoos? I don't think I decided to transition out of snowboarding. What happened? I kind of got canned, and I didn't feel like chasing the money anymore. And I realized maybe I need to take a step back and think of something else. I had a good run. It was like close to 10 years of videos, videos and video parts and things. And I already had something that I thought was a relationship and it got pulled from me. And I didn't want to, no one was like knocking down my door to like give me another contract or something. So I was like, maybe this is time to focus on something else. And something that I can be passionate about too in yeah. the same sense. And so I chose that. Yeah, let's get into exactly, you know, just sharpening your teeth and, and working at a shop for a while and just dive into that. How has that, ex that changed for you? Yeah, I really got into tattoos when I first lived out in Utah. Uh, at, uh, I think it was called 11th Street Tattoo. It's mm -hmm. no longer there anymore, but it's just something that I could, I don't know, I felt like it was kind of a similar thing. You could do do your own lane a little bit, like kind of with snowboarding, you, you find your niche or whatever and no one can judge you on that because it's what you like. So like with snowboarding, you're like, oh, I'm going to pick out these things because I like it. And so then I was like, oh, I'm measuring the two together. They go hand in hand. And all of a sudden, a few years later down the road, I'm doing it after I'm done snowboarding. And it's really awesome because a lot of the snowboard community has come to me to get tattoos now. So I feel like in a different way, I just I kind of like morphed or molded it from snowboarding into this now, which is really cool. And I'm super thankful that a lot of people still get work from me and business from it because they they're like oh i used to watch your videos snowboarding and i'm getting a tattoo from you it's really cool and it get, it lets me be a part of it again without having so much like tied up in it or whatever you know i love it that's awesome also what about uh it's a it's a it's a skill the same way you got to learn how to do a 270 on the rail like you have to learn how to draw and yeah do tattoos yeah, right? did you know how to draw beforehand uh not really when wow. i first started getting tattooed i wasn't a drawer so I've, I've taught myself and learned tricks from people along the way. You got like good that. quick. Dude. You must have had Thanks. some basic he, he drawing is skills. Natural. He has. He's a no. <laughs> I'm going to speak for him yeah. because he's not going to say this shit. <laughs> he was. A but natural. he was a he was a freak, dude. He like just he's one of those guys that just uh, going to learn how to do something mm. and he gets really good at it quick. That's how Nick is. He's not. Gonna, he's not like going to say that. So I'm going to say it. I, Thank you. I Sink could try <laughs> really Sink really hard and I would never be able to master art. With my hands drawing, you know what I mean. I'm I think you were. I think you based could. on my handwriting and to think I have shit handed, handwriting. Do you? Yeah. It's just about what you put energy towards. Yeah, energy. Yeah, you can you can learn anything. Anyone can learn anything. That's my theory. I think you can. It just takes discipline and. Yeah, but you, some people's drawing skills are just <laughs> so phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. To yeah, I mean, shit. That's the that's the crazy thing about tattooing too is like, I'm never gonna be the best. So you, you have, you have to style. find like your lane and your style, yeah. and that's why. It, it like relates so much to snowboarding to me. It's like people are like, I want you to go hit Chad's gap. I'm like, I don't hit jumps. Yeah, it's like, I want, a, I want a colored <laughs> portrait. I'm like, I don't do that. Like, mm -hmm. I just can't. And I don't want to because there's already people that are doing it better than me. And that's what's and cool. And it's fine. I don't, ha I don't have to, you know? I, cool. I'll approach you with the tattoo idea and you're like, ah, it's not really my style. Yeah. And then that's fucking cool. Where you're like, this is the shit that I want to do. And yeah. Like, I'll, I'll get, get one of those. I'll give you a good one that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's sure. awesome. That's genius. What do you think about, it seems like, everybody's just kind of picking up a tattoo gun these days, but they're not even like, they're not, they don't know how to draw. I you mean, see, you see that as, just a, as a problem. It's a, it's a two person agreement. So yeah, <laughs> that's fine with me. Yeah. yeah. They signed up for it. Yeah. I have some crappy ones like that. I think they're awesome. Yeah. They're fun. But yeah, like just kidding. because they trace them or just and draw it straight on. And yeah. Tattoo. It, it's gotta be booming, especially in Portland though. It's everybody, pretty big. Everybody yeah. likes tattoos. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. How, how stay is fairly it busy. financially and all that stuff? Is yeah. It? It's, I mean, that's the crazy thing too. So now my, once again, my passion became my job, which is also can be trying at times where you're like, oh, you create something or versus like you get a clip, you get this euphoric feeling for a little bit. Like after I finish something, I'm like that's dope. And then it's just like, like you got to do it again. And now I have to do it again to make ends meet. 
which I guess I was doing that with snowboarding too, on a different calendar type thing, 12 months versus now I go to work every day or four days a week and I have to bring something home from that. So mm-hmm. it's very similar and it's cool because you do get that feeling, but it wears off and then you chase it again. With a, with a normal job, I feel like you don't chase that feeling. You're just kind of like check in, yeah, leave. Yeah, just kind of not that stoked. Yeah, monotonous, maybe. just, yeah. Depending on the job. Do you yeah, feel depending like, on the job. Do you feel like you have to be people's therapist? I feel like when you're tattooing, Dude, all you the always, time. people yeah. talk about their problems and Dude, everything else. When people come to get tattooed me and they, and they put headphones in, I'm like, hell yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, then I can zone out too. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And you're not offended at I'm all? I'm not offended, no. Because each person needs to use it differently, you know? Like, sometimes it is therapy for someone. They had a shit week. They're like, I'm going to go do get something for myself. Do they if they chose you, me like, to do it, yeah, that's awesome. Are they like, do you care if I put headphones in? Yeah, most people will ask, yeah. and I'm like, that's all good. Some man. dudes just walk up, put them on, don't say <laughs> Yeah, that. that'd be weird. <laughs> Slap their arm, like, right here. <laughs> this is what I want. Don't yeah. talk to me. <laughs> Another thing that's cool to talk about is, like, what about, so you've been a pro snowboarder, yeah. and now you you go to work. Like, mm-hmm. you, you're, you basically have hours. What do you, do you, what do you like better? I think they're even, but. And, and I think they're even with freedom too, because I'm my own boss. I make my own schedule. I work with a team of people, but we all split everything. And so maybe I have more freedom now tattooing because there's no one I have to answer to except myself and like my clients, which snowboarding, it's like, you gotta be here to do this catalog shoot and you gotta do this. And you're like, good Jesus, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. Sometimes it would be exhausting. You're like, I just want to go on this filming trip. And they're like, we need you for 10 days, calendar year to do this. And you're like, okay, fine. But, there's also this other like kind of, like looming thing as a pro snowboarder that like you got to be really on top of your game or somebody's going to take your spot. For sure, it's a it's a yeah. There's always that next kid, huh? Yeah, it's very unstable. Yeah, that's the unless you get very tied into like a a family type company or a core company that like has your back for a long time. But if you're going to ride for like big corporations and skiers, there's always someone younger that will that is better and that will do it for cheaper or free. Mm. Well so said. Th- you're on a chopping block a little bit. Well said. Yeah. Always. Well, I think the ultimate dream of having doing, you know, we have this, which Buds and I love. I'm, yeah. I'm going to speak for Buds. And we commute to the office. I'm, I'm like a fucking 9 yeah. to 5 or some days. <laughs> like we're driving in with traffic and it's like, you know what? And you, I love it though. You know why you love it? You work for yourself. True. That's yeah. a good point. For sure. You do. You have like a passion to create this thing. <laughs> And it's yours now. You guys, Salt Lake traffic's pretty chill. Yeah, it's chill. but the <laughs> yeah. other thing too that that I think is a bigger like when you look at all right, I want to be a pro snowboarder or I want to do something else. Like really, the real end goal I th- <sighs> I think is to be able to snowboard in your own terms. Mm. Absolutely, and that's what you're able to do. I'm having more fun snowboarding than I have in the last ten years. I went this morning. I went yesterday. I try to go once or twice a week. Hopefully, see, teaching my daughter soon, so maybe she'll love it too. But yeah, it's it, now it's like refreshing. I get excited to go when. It's weird, like, you, you become a pro, and you do it. It's super fun. I mean, I'm sure it's different for everybody. I'm sure some of these pro snowboarders are stoked to go every time, no matter what the circumstance. But, like, for me, I was, it was just, like, chipping off my shoulder a little bit more and more, and then push come to shove, got canned, and I was like, it's time to do something else. Well, unless you're that big, big dog that stacked up enough money to retire. Yeah. you got to start focusing on your future sooner than later anyways. To, Absolutely. So to have that craft to be able to move on to that you're passionate about, I mean, mm-hmm. that's the that's the real goal I would hope for any snowboarder that yeah. is thinking about their future anyways or else they're going to have a rough one. Yeah, think ahead. I mean, even if you work in, if you love it that much, work an industry job or do something. Yeah, because if you're riding that, like, little paycheck wave, it will end. It's going to end, yeah. It does end. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, shit, I'm... 31 years old, I don't have... Didn't go to college. You know, I don't know College, don't not, have a trade. Yeah. yeah, like, oh, man. All right, now it's 3-1, another whatever. Figure you got to find yeah. that next passion. You know what mm-hmm. I think is also like a really a, a good way to look at it. You look at what you want to do, too. It's like chasing the pro career is awesome. It's great. You, you push yourself. You maybe push yourself to levels that you never knew your ability level could get to. You mm-hmm. can You can do these feats that you maybe didn't think were possible for your skill set. And that's awesome. And you get some, some accolades and you get some validation and, and people are, you know, maybe you're kind of maybe mini snowboard famous or some people know who you are, right? That, that stuff feels good. It feeds the ego. But if you really le- love snowboarding, I almost think like the, the real hack is like f- set yourself up with a good career where you have free time and make a bunch of money and then snowboard on your own fucking terms. Yeah, go do yeah. it by yourself. I think yeah. that's you like. You can the, have just as much fun, you, right? Yeah, For sure. I think that that's the if, real like black belt move. If that job doesn't take too much away from. Yeah. 
access to ghosts. Well, and a cool whatever, part yeah. of being pro too, or a photographer, is that traveling the world and maybe you yes. got held hostage in Beirut. And, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> or cool, Le- cool Lebanon, happen, but yeah, or yeah. Lebanon, yeah. or wherever. <laughs> You're like, is I, it Beirut in Lebanon? Uh, I don't know. Not sure. Yeah, well, either am I. But <laughs> well, we got challenged a, talking about uh, you know when when you got <laughs> dropped by K two, you did something uh, very funny when you when you got dropped. Yeah, we what, did, to, what did you do? My contract was ending. And they promised, they promised me we were family. You were going to keep you on. My contract was up midwinter. Contract ended. I kept filming for Videograss. Ended, ended, ended. Come for re-signing. Guess what? They don't have it in the budget anymore. So I rode their board all winter, and I got... It's the last video part I ever filmed. I got opening part again in May Day. Mm-hmm. And then that, that was the last video part I ever filmed. So I was pretty resentful towards them for like... It felt like like misleading me on a little bit. Yeah. Like, like, oh, we, we're getting your contract ready. We're trying to do it, blah, blah, blah. Your family, don't worry about it. And then the phone call. I was flying home from Salt Lake, and I was sitting in one of the terminals. And I got the call from the team manager, like, "Hey, sorry, we're gonna have to let you go." I was like, "It was the end of the winter. I was out here on like a spring shoot or something." And I was like, "I went home, kind of tail between my leg." And I was like, "Dude, what? Invested so much time into this, and I can just be ripped away like that." It wasn't like the whole family until you're not family. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like big buco cheddar biscuits that I was losing, but I was just like, "Dude, this is what I had established. Now I don't." really have much like no one's gonna come beating down the door for middle part guy <laughs> <laughs> like, it's fine but and then so i was really pretty like hurt towards them and so i went up to seattle about a week or two later to go get tattooed by a tattooer that i liked up there and happened to be driving on the way home by k2 and i told my friend to pull over and get his camera and i pissed on their sign <laughs> like the, <laughs> like the <laughs> The uh, classic <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes. Yes. Just oh, yeah. piss on the, mm-hmm. the sign. Yeah. Ford or Chevy, whatever you like. Yeah. Yep. But I was like, K2, you're done. You make rollerblades, you make skis, you're not snowboarding, you're not core, and you dirt. You, they did me dirty. But now, it, I mean, it seems like they've got something good going, I think, and some of my friends ride for them. And, but just be careful. Ski companies. <laughs> yeah, the, the family till you're not family scenario can happen exactly and i'm I, i'm i know minute. it's not the only i'm not the only one it's happened to yeah it happens a lot i feel like yeah. it's a reoccurring thing it's nowhere gonna it's kind of it's a bummer kind of sad yeah. it is sad it's a bummer because then you see these companies that hold they cherish their pro riders and all the stuff and if they don't have a spot on the mega pro team and they're not in videos anymore they're just like ambassadors and they're like always in the catalogs and they're, they're just still a part of it which yeah, they're is traveling with them yeah it's cool man it's cool yeah yeah, and there, there's something to be said about integrity. Like, if you're going to give somebody a contract, don't lead them on. That's don't lead me on. I wish they would have told me, we're not going to have space for you anymore. That way, I was, like, so gung-ho that year. I wanted first or last part. Mm-hmm. I was, like, trying really hard to film it. I got first part. I could have filmed it on someone else's board that would have been stoked and maybe gave me another contract. And maybe I would have still been filming snowboard parts up to now. But that was just a – it was just – that was a segue into something else. I would hope that guy who's telling, leading you on, maybe he was trying and trying. Yeah, yeah. And so then it, it got clipped. Yeah. Exactly. I think it maybe. wasn't him. I think it was probably the bigger heads yeah. that are just looking at numbers. And those corporate companies, yeah. You're just yeah. a number on a whiteboard. Exactly. And they're like, what is he doing? It could he be erased. Yeah, he hasn't second. had opener or closer. He doesn't do contests. He doesn't do that. So they're like, he's not making us money. But it's like, you need... You just need to be... Who's this middle part guy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the chop. <laughs> Which and then I've been chopped also, a few times. I think it's that fine. also the chop is that's like um, that's a heavy thing to talk about because I've been I got dropped by Monster. I remember mm-hmm. and and the, it was hard for me. It, it's like uh, you you put so much of your self worth on your your like kind of title as a as a pro snowboarder when it's ripped away. It's kind of an identity struggle. It did you, did you suffer with that at all? I did for a while. I w- I didn't know what to do and I was like okay, but I still had the urge to film. So like I had help from other companies like Joe at Public was sending me boards dangler sent me some boards for capita and i was like but I, there, no one had anything to offer no one was making a ton of money they're like so i was just happy to be getting give like gifted snowboards and stuff so i could still keep riding because i want to jump down stuff and your board gets all messed up i'm not gonna buy one <laughs> 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 no way so air blaster kept bringing me on trips and stuff so that was really my last and my first and my last sponsor that still is thing so air blaster yeah shouts to them so, that's sick. yeah it's super cool so killer well along the lines of where you grew up riding meadows i know you had like a you got fucked up in meadows right oh dude what happened there? so bad i uh and when when was when was it 2012 it was okay. uh the year after well um these days 
No, it was, was, so it was these days. Video grass. What was it? The second bon video grass. Shoot, bon the bon bon shoot the moon. Shoot the moon Because uh, was that the year that Nike did the Never Not too? No, because Jed has a part in Shoot the Moon. Okay. Never Not was the next year. So it was the next year because I I was I think I was supposed to be helping out or like getting clips for that or whatever. Yeah. And I broke my femur up at Meadow. So it was Shoot the Moon year. Yeah, and I that's a gnarly one. Dude, it was really bad. I was just cruising a powder field with my buddy Tyler Tyler Verrigan, Melhead Legend. Yeah, and uh. Dude, it was super funny. I don't smoke weed at all. And we took last chair up like uh, Cascade. It's the top of the mountain or whatever. And this dude, he's like, he's on the lift, like singles line. He gets on the lift with us. He's like, you guys want to go to the woods and burn one? I'm like, sure. <laughs> and you don't even smoke. <laughs> I don't even smoke weed. Because Tyler smokes weed. So I'm like, all right, we're going to go smoke weed with this guy. He's a character. He's funny. He, he, we get in the woods and he like busts out this backpack. He pulls out like a bubbler. He's like, oh my, oh my, oh my God. You got to respect people that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can you ride around with glass all yeah. day? It's crazy. <laughs> and so we like get super high. I'm like, holy shit, I'm so stoned. And then we're literally riding just a powder field and I hit a sinkhole. No. And my front leg went underneath the sinkhole and there was a rock or a stump or something and I flipped forward and it broke my leg in half. And I, the ski patrol was doing their last run. And Tyler flagged them down, and they had to hike up to get me. And it was like an end of a powder day, so the runs were all... I was just in the meat wagon with the, my leg in two pieces. It was really bad. I and heard then, it's the most painful. Yeah. Like, I blacked out. You it was crazy. I mean, it might have been the, the chronic weed, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I blacked out. Um, and then I, they ambulanced me, and I was in ICU for almost two weeks, 10 to 14 days wow. or something, because the bone marrow went into my lungs, so I had a really low breathing rate. So I was just like, I don't even remember it really. It was like full blackout. It was a bad one. It was bad. And I was on crutches, wheelchair, physical therapy for almost a year. And then it was really hard for me to get back into snowboarding. Even though I didn't like wreck super hard, it was a freak accident. Like I never really got hurt. Not going to like ever filming too bad, like little tweaks and stuff like that. But that was a bad one. And it was really hard to jump on the pony again, like jump down a scary thing. Like, ooh. It, I think it took PTSD. me. PTSD. Yeah, PTSD. It took me another season or two to actually feel fairly comfortable with like getting back in the groove of it. Especially if you're just riding a powder field, and Dude, everything's chill, and the next second you know you're blacking out with a out of nowhere, fever. cartwheeled over, boom, leg was in Dude. two pieces. I remember picking it up, and it was my leg was like a bowl of jello. I was like, oh, because I tried to stand up, and my leg like <sighs> folded in two, and I was like, oh, getting bad. It wasn't compound or anything, right? No, no it that's compound. the strongest bone in your body. Yeah, yeah. The, it it's is. crazy because your leg, your bo- your leg. I've seen a few femur breaks, and it's like your legs straight, but then your like foot's folded over. Dude, like, it's, it's like sideways. so wild. You want to like it's throw yeah, up? It's looking crazy. At it. It's, it's so super good. gross. We're gonna get into a Patreon question, Chris. Want to talk about Patreon for a sure? Second? Yeah, Patreon. Uh, well, first of all, thank you to our sponsors. They make this thing happen. Huge shouts to you guys. Shout out to the guys that buy merch and support us. But a huge, huge way we're able to do this show is we're a podcast funded by the people. So uh, thank you to our Patreon members. You can basically sign up anywhere five to, to 50 bucks a month. And you get to ask a question on air like this. You get some behind the scenes interviews and a couple of things, but mainly it helps us uh, be idiots into these microphones. So uh, with that being said, buds, what do we got? Let's go. And also a lot of the Patreon people DM us. We shoot the shit. So yeah, it's part of the community, part of our, you guys are our people. So thank you. This is from Sean Fitzpatrick. Can you talk about the magic of riding nights at Ski Bowl? Also, would you tattoo an air blaster pill on me? Absolutely, I would. Yes, come find me. Um, Ski Bowl is a very magical place. It's. I didn't grow up going there. I mean, a little bit. But now that I'm older, I like to stay away from big corpo resorts and lines and the extra drive. Ski Bowl is this very magical place on Mount Hood that's two-seater lifts, slower pace of things, very lax. Some friends up there running the the new rope toe that they've all done and they're doing like a really awesome job. It looks insane. It's so fun, man. And they're keeping snowboarding core and feel it's super fun. It's just a ma and pa resort. And you, it just, it doesn't feel as like rural regimented, you know, or sometimes you go to these resorts and you're going through like technotron, like little gates, and yeah. like scanners everywhere. They're just like, you put like, there's a dude up there that probably has like 50 lift tickets, like on the zip tie, like, and then, yeah, it's just the, those old school peop- vibes. Old school cheaper, vibes. It's cheaper. Probably. It's cheaper. It's a half hour closer. It's really fun. It's the, actually the steepest of all Mount Hood stuff. And it's the, the biggest night skiing, I think, in, in Oregon. Wow. How many resources does Mount Hood have on it? Three. Three. Yeah. Wow, that's Unless crazy. There's like a snowshoeing one, too, or something. But You ever hit that? You big really snowshoe? Yeah, I'm big, big into big it. Big <laughs> <laughs> I've been timing myself. 
Snowshoeing yeah. is for people that don't have like any other hobbies. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm Clearing going ahead. I'm sure if you tried it, you'd. I mean, you've done it. You've been up there. I mean, I do it with you a snowboard on my back yeah. when I'm going to go, Dude. Uh, yeah, hit a cliff or something. Yeah, yeah you're like, they're getting right. out there. You know, they're enjoying we're, winter. Yeah, <laughs> I got to slap some respect on those snowshoes. You know what? I don't. I, w- I don't want to hate. We're not anti snowshoers. Let's give them. A, let's give them an air horn. What if? We, what if we put like uh, soap sliders on snowshoes? Oh my god, that could be a new <laughs> yeah. parkour meets uh, mm-hmm. yeah, snowshoeing. Snow yeah. yeah, that would be dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like jumping sets, like yeah. running sprint, <laughs> just <laughs> like dead sprint in the snowshoe to get speed. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> bungee in. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah, we need to get the extreme snowshoeing going. That's a yeah. fact. Maybe we'll go one more Patreon. Yeah, let's hit another yeah, page. Let's, let's do it. This is from Hugs, and I'm wondering, is it Huggy? I don't know. If it is Huggy, that's awesome. When visiting Japan, are you at? Are you a Lawson's, Family Mart, Seven Eleven, or Cycle Mart guy? Dang, I don't think I've hit uh, the other two. I've hit the Lawson's and the Seven Eleven, and I think I'm going seven. Yeah, Sevi, yeah. pretty sick. The seven dubs. Right. What's your go-to where snacks in there? Just the mystery wasabi or w- triangles. Must be triangles. They're yeah. so dope. You're like, cool. Like one time you get like salmon, and the next one it's like squid guts or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, <"Whoa." laughs> yeah, it is awesome. just a little roulette. Yeah, it's situation. pretty fun. Yeah, if you don't ask the guide, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go with this one this mm-hmm. time. And yeah, they're usually always awesome. I yeah. feel like on street trips, like you go to your Sev or your Lawson's or yeah, Psycho you Mart, and you just fill up for the day. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, like, you eat all your snacks by about noon, and <laughs> yeah. then you're just, like, <laughs> trying on the to floor. survive. You're basically yeah. in survival mode for People the rest of the day. People walk out of Until those dinner. 7-Elevens with, like, two big bags. Oh, yeah, and for you're sure. done by noon. <laughs> <laughs> the sheer amount of waste, there's, like, four packages Dude, of wrapping for everything. Yeah. And then you might go back for dinner, depending where you're staying. <laughs> for sure, yeah. yeah. They got the pizza buns, too, yeah. those little uh, buns that are filled with pizza. I've had, like, spaghetti at 7-Eleven mm, yeah. and Sapporo. I mean, the place is no joke. Well, we have another... This is this is big. This is big. We have another guest question. This is a surprise guest question. Uh, an absolute leyunda, which is Spanish for legend, of the game. Mr. Larry, LNP, wow. Laurent wow. Nicholas wow. Paquin. Here we go. Hey, Nick. Larry here. <laughs> uh, in the early VG years, the first VG, I think it was, uh, we did a green handrail. I don't remember what city it was, but you, we thought some people would come and hit it and you, um, you stopped them from hitting it by putting something on the takeoff. (laughs) Can you explain what it was and how you did it? Yeah. Cheers, bud. (laughs) Love you, Larry. Damn. Is that the first time he's been on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. We guys it was amazing. Great. Yeah, yeah, he got right back to us I mean, with that answer. Me and Laurent both have like history with body humor, I guess, because yeah. this one goes to that yeah. alley here, yeah, that lane. Um, we, <laughs> I don't even think I did a cool trick. I did like a lip slide or something. And I was like, we heard that like people or Mac Dog was like in town and they were going to hit the same spot. So in fashion, because I heard that they used to like shovel the lips out or whatever, mm-hmm. make it like, or chain them up or cut cut the rail or whatever. I was like, I'm going to take a shit on the lip. <laughs> Cause I, I think they were going to like hit the spot that night or whatever. So I just took a huge dump like right on the lip. It's pretty funny. It was me, Jonas and Laurent and Meyer. Meyer might even have footage of that, which I don't want that to surface, but we will pop that <laughs> yeah, up, right like up in the corner. Like, no, yeah. I like think Ramon did that on Chad's gap once. He took a turn yeah. on it. Dude, legend status. Yeah. That's awesome. You're like, I did it. No one's hitting <laughs> Claim this. it mine. Yeah, it's cool. And you could literally just show it mm-hmm. off. But if yeah. I rolled up and there was a big poop on it. Well, I think I, I think it was snowing or maybe something. We were like, dude, oh. if I poop and then it snows, and then I'll try to like pow slip it or something. <laughs> just smear <laughs> it. turd. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But That would be great. I don't know. Maybe they could get a follow-up question with them if they ever went to that talk, rail. Talk about just <laughs> career <laughs> pinnacles. Like urinating on the K2 side. Oh, man. Shitting taking his lip. shit on the lip. Like <laughs> these, This guy's been just nailing it for so <laughs> Well, yeah, didn't know uh, it hold up so well, but I also yeah. I have a personal question I'd like to ask. Yeah, uh, is it true that you can kick yourself in the face? No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we tried? Yeah. <laughs> no, not possible. Okay, okay, all right. Just had to clear that up. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think this is a great time for Volcom uh, bomb hole of the week, but it is a great time. What for are we bomb What are we talking about here? We're talking about Volcom ZipTech. What is ZipTech, bud? ZipTech is a zipper that's uh, located in the pants that connects to the jacket, and it's going to keep winter elements out, keeping you warm, riding longer. Why is that good, bud? That's good because if you're out there eating eating shit in the streets like this guy. <laughs> You're going to need to stay warm or like any, any, everyone falls, right? Yep. Yeah. Keep the snow out, stay warm and stay out longer. 
What uh, Volcom riders fall really hard that could benefit from this? Well, we <laughs> always talk about Pat Moore, so <laughs> we know Pat Moore does. <laughs> but Reed Smith, when he's out in the streets, I mean, everyone. Arthur, I mean, he falls. We watch Natural Selection. Well, that's rare. That's rare. Yeah, but he, he does. It happens, right? Even the best. The best fall. So what are we doing, a giveaway? We're going to do a giveaway. If you're going to do uh, on Instagram, upload your favorite bail. A good bail that's going to entertain a Volcom rider. Hashtag Volcom bomb proof. And uh, we're going to pick a winner. Actually, a Volcom team rider is going to pick a winner. And you upload it onto IG, right? On Instagram. Hashtag Volcom bomb proof. And the winner is going to get some Volcom stuff as well as some bomb hole stuff. A little combo care package. Beautiful. Um, cool. Well, I think we should talk about a couple uh, notable clips. Okay. Uh, first things first. One, one that I love is uh, that giant frontside air into the rock you did that was your ender in one of the VGs. Oh, my God. That looked like it was filmed by, like, a Nokia brick with, like, dirt on the lens. <laughs> Dude, <it was> Nokia <laughs> brick. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> Pissing rain. <Yes>. <laughs> Pissing <laughs> rain. So that was in France, and we it was towards the end of our trip. I wanted to do it, but I didn't. it was, like, a town lower than where we were staying. I saw it at the beginning of the trip. I wanted to go back. I want to go back. But everyone, you know, people have their agenda. You got to do other things, all this stuff. And I finally got a chance to do it. We're like, we're going to go down there tomorrow. And I'm like, we, but tomorrow was like the last like filming day while we were up in France or whatever. And we, all our guides and everything and like the local kids and stuff, they wanted to take us to like a discotheque or whatever. So dude, we ended up drinking so much the night before like platters of vodka shots and like <laughs> platters <laughs> Dude, literally platters they're like it just kept bringing them like the hell i think we ended up like naked in the bar like partying super hard wow. like, there's crazy photos of it it's so weird so hungover wake up and everyone's like nick it's like your day we're going to the castle wall and i was like jesus it's, it's your was, day was like, dude smelling like kirkland signature vodka I'm like, okay let's go go down there and i set up the spot as soon as it's set up, it's pissing rain. I'm like, okay, cool. So I borrowed, or I, I think I borrowed someone's like clear glasses. And coming into the run-in, you had to go down this like slushy rain snow thing and hook hard left into the castle. So you couldn't see it until you're there. And the only way for me to make a marker, because it was a full snowfield, I found some euros in my pocket, like coins, and I threw them on the lip. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, here's, I was like standing there and I was like, okay. I have to go that way. And I'll be like, I just put a coin and be like, okay, look for the coin. And I'm like, in the run in, like, right in my house, sweating alcohol profusely. I'm like, I got this. I, I folded my body so many times on the thing, just whack, whack, whack. But I ended up riding away from it. And that's the last clip of that trip. It was that's brutal. That's awesome. Super sore. Sounds like a great time. You painted yeah. a nice picture of that session. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and I think that it was either a Nokia brick or a Motorola Razor <laughs> film. Like, and it's like, isn't it my last clip? Yes. One of them was such it's quality. It's it's like so bad. It's like probably my rain. Like a, it was rain, dude. Yeah, it was like, rain like all over a plastic the lens. bag and like <laughs> yeah. so much stuff. Everyone was miserable. Oh, yeah. It was funny. Soaking wet afterwards. And yeah, we went home. Uh, then there's another clip I got to bring up that is just, we, we can't uh, we can't miss this one. Oh, wait, what? Are we talking Castle Wall? Which Castle Wall? No, the one you're talking about. This rain. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You're, you're right about you're that. Okay. Oh, no, this, there's we're a couple about this ones. Yeah, yeah. Story. That yeah, was I'm the like, one. Mm, yeah, mm. there's like two angles. It's your ender. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many okay. castles have you been jibbing on? A couple. A couple. The yeah. big castle guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for a castle. <laughs> yeah. I went and shot a castle, castle in France. Google map. <laughs> See a castle around France here? France has that, though. They got I mean, there's always spots in a castle. Yeah, there's always spots. and shit. I love Out of the moat. the best. The best. Was the classic Carlino would always be like, I'm looking for a boat jib. Like, <laughs> when you're in boat? Finland, everyone talks about boat, <laughs> boat jibs. I've been looking for a boat jib because Haldor was yeah. big on the boat jib. Yeah, like, like grinding the side of them to lakes or <laughs> yeah. something. Okay. You guys got any good boat jib around here? <laughs> they asked the guy. It's like you're yeah. fucking with them. When Land you're in France, you're lake. looking for a castle. In Finland, you're looking for a boat. It'll just film so well. Full desperation spot. Yeah. Like, ah, uh, fuck it. We can go hit the boat. I mean, there's no, no good rails left. I did see a boat down there. Uh, that's oh what, man, that's I got photos know. of a couple boats. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah, you've been there. I think I've shot yeah. three or four boats in, <laughs> in two you're, castles. You're like looking through all the spots. Uh, you're like, we got nothing left. Uh, there's a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a boat down by the down by the river earlier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking token boat jib, token dude. Boat. <clears throat> that's awesome well another one speaking of boat jib there is another uh vehicle that you have jibbed that is kind of a not commonly jibbed feature <laughs> the cop car yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah i think that was also another ending or maybe that was the end that was the ender ender yeah uh, 
Yeah, that was crazy. It was a uh, Minnesota or I mean, yeah, it says uh, St. Paul, St. Paul. Yeah, so St. Paul, Minnesota, and we saw it because I think there's a spot close by it ar- around that area, and uh, I noticed the cop security car there like a few days prior, and I was like, damn, there's a big ass hill behind it, but it was at this huge apartment complex, right? So like, is that where the kink rail is? Maybe it's like where the Duluth or yeah. Or sorry, continue. I don't mean to remember. No, no that's fine. I Maybe it is. I think Minnesota. I know where that is. I think it's in that general area because yep. it's like on the side of the hill. Maybe it's yep. Duluth, St. Paul. I don't know. Yep. But uh, and I was like, I'm gonna hit it. I gotta hit it. And everyone's like, You're crazy, dude. I'm like, I'm gonna ride over that thing. I gotta do it. So we planned to do it the the last day of the trip. But what I didn't take into account for is it in the parking lot is a huge apartment complex, right? The, uh, all the windows face the hill. And so there, there was mad traffic. Like every time I'd try to go, there would be someone like walking and I'd be like, shit. So I was up on top of the hill and I was hiding underneath the tree. And Justin Meyer was down <laughs> at the van with the door open and the car running. And I don't remember if I was on a cell phone or I think we were just doing like signals kind of. And then there's a few times where I got the signal to go and then I'd be going and then someone would walk out of the building and be like, shit, like go hide again. But I'm wearing bright orange overalls in the trees. Like, and then so we... We finally got the chance to do it. It was one take. I think I was like already unstrapping when I was at the hood. I was like, get it off. <laughs> before he even <laughs> got before, off the hood. Before I even got off the hood. And then I landed and I'm like fully unstrapped. And we, I ran to the van. We closed the door. And they drove me straight to the airport and I flew home. Because my flight was like. Get within, out of there. Was, quick yeah, as just you boom. Can. Just, I landed in Portland. I was like, damn, I drove or I rode over a cop car today. Like a few hours ago. Yeah, was, to me, that, that fun. we and just for the record, Andy uh, gave us some prints. Huge shout out to Andy, Andy right? Yeah, he shot you, the photo, and we have we're gonna have a bunch of signed prints of Nick Dirk's uh, fifty fifty in the cop car <laughs> available at bombhole.com. I like that it's, it's a fifty fifty. Yeah. It's, it's a fifty fifty. <laughs> sure, yeah, right. Uh, so it's, it, <laughs> it's a get over. <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing that's amazing to me when I look at like. Because we were like, oh, we'll do some Dirk's prints. Like, you got a whole catalog of amazing photos. But, like, that one yeah. is, to me, like, that's you in a nutshell. Just the <laughs> fucking <laughs> shithead kid yeah, that's, awesome, that's, man. that's having a good time. Yeah, right? it was fun. Is that one of your favorite photos? Uh, yeah, I think it probably is, yeah. yeah. It looks I like, like that the windshield's all frozen, too. Yeah. Got yeah. nice. Dude, uh, it was really slippery. Really really nice. I was like, I yeah. bet, dude, if I would have fell, like, I had to try again. Oh, man. <laughs> like, I don't think you get the second <laughs> no. chance. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, it was fun. I wonder. I think uh, like someone else did a cop car, like some Euro or something back in the day. But actually, like I think it was maybe staged or something. Or like they jumped over, over it. the sirens or something. Like well, you're on top of that. I'm, a, I'm riding that. You're yeah. riding that car. Yeah. All right, let's get into another guest question. This is a guest question presented by Mountain Dew from Mountain Dew team athlete, professional skateboarder Sean Malto. Here we go. What was the most pivotal moment in your career? I, that's crazy. Sean Malta knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Sean. What up? Give him an air um, <laughs> yeah, uh, probably the cover of Transworld because it actually made me go into further projects and have this life for 10 years of doing this and still doing it. It was very pivotal. Yeah. That's amazing. Are you? Uh, what's your plans for, for snowboarding? Are you going to try to get some clips? I still get clips. Yeah, I'm trying, but it's few and far between yeah we I still to, like to get out there we need to see we need to see the the dirks clip so people need it i'm gonna go out with meyer tomorrow and some other homies to get a clip before i head home so it's we'll get some ideas where are you guys going uh somewhere like near woodward or something maybe in the little neighborhood we'll find something it's mm-hmm. not hard hit me up yeah. dog. all right i'm gonna go down yeah. yeah i think mikey's gonna come and spencer's gonna come oh, yeah mikey's his comeback project yeah dude he's, he's stacking that's cool i was hanging with mikey last night with all the other dudes stacks and spinny and bogs yeah it's cool good it's good we got a good uh community here with all that stuff. yeah it's really cool it's funny how like when you film one clip does it does it come right back where you're like fuck i need to get another. dude it's addicting yeah the yeah. clip yeah. Like, is real. i think i filmed a couple pl- clips last winter in portland when it snowed and the winter prior to that which they got thrown in like some durham projects or something like that and then the new sims video came out and i have a couple clips in that which it's fun to like just quasimodo get a, yeah quasimodo it's an awesome movie so just a few little like just sprinkle it around, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not working on a project, but who knows? Maybe I will one day again now because I'm my own boss, and I would like to... i still got some gas left in the tank. Yeah, you do. Yeah. When you think Mikey knew he was going to make a project at his age now, so you never know. You could, exactly. You could be doing this. Yeah, yeah. it's so funny, too. Like, when you're you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to film part this year or something. You get literally one clip, and you're like, I'm it's like a drug part. addict. Dude. I need a two. I need two. I need three. I Actually, I need four. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, this, like, snowball effect. Chasing the yeah. dragon. It's fun. 
So I always felt like you were somebody who's snowboarding just came naturally. It came easy to you from my perspective. Um, do you, do you feel that way or not? I'm with certain things. It's, I can't ride pipe. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't come easy. Like no way. Um, I think it, it was an advantage too that, um, uh, my mom and dad let me start at such a young age. I started somewhere in eight or nine and it became such an obsession. Like it's all I wanted to do. So I think starting young is a good foundation to, to get decent or good at it. I think it's hard to learn stuff when you're older. Stuck in your ways, you're stiff, you're like afraid of getting hurt more. So, yeah. Ollie just texted in a funny uh, question for you that we already covered. Ollie Gagnon? Ask him what his favorite logo is to piss on. (laughs) 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 Yeah, Ollie, you know that one. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. (laughs) He was so excited you were coming up. That's cool, man. Ollie's a great friend of mine. I just went down to Mexico with him. They said you guys had uh, spent a lot of time together over the years. Yeah, we have. He, every time he comes to Portland, he stays with us, too. He, oh, that's sick. His family, man. All he's mm-hmm. the best. Mm-hmm. So going back, uh, let's just talk about the board you got behind you. Yeah. You did the Sims graphics, right? Yeah, I did a couple graphics for Sims that'll come out following winter, which is 2022-23 season. Yeah, they approached me. I have some really good friends, Shane, who's working for them. Shane Schultz. Yeah. Uh, and they approached me to do two graphics, and I did. And the response through Sims team, I think they're all pretty stoked, and hopefully we, we're going to keep making more. Cause That's a good fit. It's fun, too. I mean, it's nice to, to reel it back. I, w- I really wanted to do, like, a hand-drawn board graphic because I'm sick of seeing computer-made mm-hmm. stuff with triangles and slash marks and look just, like, the name of the company in bright pink or green. Like, it's boring. It's been done. It needs to, be like, come back to, like, what snowboarding once was. You was, put the art in. Yeah, use the artists. Use other writers. Use, have the influence. It doesn't have to be a designer that makes it. Because the people that are riding them, they're the mo- more creative, I think, than like the team behind it. Mm-hmm. Listen to them. They're the ones that are going to be on it more than you. So it's cool that they, they gave me a direction. They wanted to go like old school Sims style. So we, we took a, a play of the old Noah Selaznik graphic and ran with that. And The dirt biker on the top yes, seat. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. He's like claiming number one, but his bike's all broken down. And he's like <laughs> just all beat from the day. Is yeah. that inspired by uh, Scott Blum at Absolutely, all? Yeah. yeah. Scott had a lot to do with the graphic. He wanted like a dirt bike theme graphic so is that his board uh i don't think it, it's the nub oh it's i don't think nub. it's like his pro model okay, but it's like it. the board he rides shape's pretty sick shape yeah. is super cool big spoony nose low tail. profile too yeah. it's pretty cool mm-hmm. brands hit up nick if you need a graphic yeah please designer. do i would love to do more i've uh i made joe sexton's pro model a few years back so it's cool that companies are now coming to me to design some stuff even though i'm probably not the best to work with because i can't send you a PDF pre- what are, what preview are we, of what in, it's going to be. FedEx in your art. Too. Yeah, like <laughs> finger paint. Totally. <laughs> yeah, like I drew like this graphic behind me. I laid out a piece of like butcher paper and hand drew it. Two and then, size. Two size. Wow. And then I scanned it at like Office Depot. Sick. Like they fed it through the scanner. Because I don't want to lose the integrity of like draw it small and then someone blows something yeah. up and you lose it. So I was just like, I'm going to draw it full scale. That's really and I have all that stuff. That. It's all rolled up like with a rubber band on it. And what are you doing? That thing would look great on the wall of the yeah. office. I can send it send to you guys. Oh, we, want it. We, we got a whole museum, got a museum going here. Yeah, let's do it. You yeah. can always get it back from us. You know, That's fine. I'll do that. I have some prototypes I can send you guys. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah. And then uh, another thing just to talk about on the subject, I love what you're saying about graphics because it, it definitely was frustrating. I remember being, you know, riding for Solomon for so long and, and it was always this thing where, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to design my own graphics. I'm yeah. so thankful for that. But I remember looking at the graphics at the time and it was like, it has to say the company name in big bold letters across the bottom and that's what the sales guys want and that's what's going to sell and then i remember just walking into like a skateboard shop and looking at the walls of skateboards and being like these are fucking cool it's art it's art yeah. and then a snowboard is like just this weird <laughs> that's not viewed as that watered down just designed over designed it's just it's ugly and it's i feel like it's starting to leave snowboarding that a lot of stuff I see graphics now and they're actually they're way better than what they were. We went through this odd era. It was like probably I feel like five to ten years of bad graphics. Mm-hmm. Unless you were if you're on a ski company, they're terrible. They just look like it skis gl- skis glued together. And like, <laughs> here's your snowboard. You're like, What? <laughs> <laughs> so ugly. <laughs> yeah. But it's starting to I feel like companies are starting to realize that and paying artists to do stuff and it's great. And it's probably because of the internet and Instagram and stuff like this. It's, it helps. Totally. It yeah. helps to, to look down at something cool, too. For sure. It's it important. makes you feel good. Like, look at your cool sticker job and your yeah. graphic. Like, you don't want to look at a ski logo. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what hey, you look here? at that new Russell art. Yeah, that, that one's super cool. Yeah, like, that that's just amazing. bringing so an amazing artist in, and we need more of that. 
We do need more of that. Yeah. Hire the artists. I mean, I remember Tech Nine back in the day always had like we sick always, art. Yeah. Doman. Yeah, Doman, Doman would do a lot, lot of it. Of those, yeah. yeah. So cool. I remember Benny always had a sick graphic. Yeah, Benny put some dude. heaters. He had like together. a lowrider one that the dudes were like in Gooner. the car. Or he had the, the shank one. Yeah, the shanks. So All the cool. prison shanks were yeah. so dope. So yeah, Gooner dope. always had a good eye dude. for ideas and for sure. graphics. The Chucky graphics. And all you just put him and Doman in a room and they'd come up with something. What's your favorite graphic of all time, Dirk? Ooh, man. That's that's a great question. That's probably an unanswered. Oh, actually, uh, I don't think I can answer that on the spot. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's a thinker. Uh, yeah, it's a thinker, and nothing comes like straight to mind. Yeah. For some reason, I'm thinking the Travis Parker musket rip off being. Oh, that was. Crazy. You know what? I thought too. I thought also thought of the Travis Parker like wild style one. It oh like, yeah, he was like yeah. dressed as a banana, playing like a yep. bongo. Because <laughs> it's probably because I watched that video part a couple days ago, so it's fresh on the mind. Fresh mm-hmm. on the mind. There's yeah. so many. There's good so ones many. Go and they all used to be so cool. Like even Burton used to have really cool ones, like UC's graphics, and yeah, there was a bunch of really cool, like hand drawn artist stuff. Yeah, yeah. I really liked when graphics were, they would just do like a, a graphic in between the bindings. Yeah, and it would be like a solid color, and then the base would be something different, just to focus on like that's a cool look. That old brand Solid, they always had solid that head look. Stuff, it's yeah. always between the bindings. Yeah, it's cool. Shorty's graphics. Yeah. Those are dope. All right, we're going to get into uh, Hot Takes. Hot Takes is presented by Oakley. Oakley goggles. Uh, they also make helmets, too. Is it true that Oakley lenses are bulletproof? Uh, I don't know, but I'm not <laughs> willing to test that. No. While they're on I my head. I was thinking we go up to the cabin. Yeah. Give it a try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bad it. shot, though. So. <laughs> Might take a while. Uh, I get asked a lot of times what helmet I run because I recently started running a helmet. I run the Mod 5. That thing works great for me. Uh, Pairs up with the gl- goggles pretty sick, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, lines up with the line miners really well. They, they're good lenses. So a uh, good little combo platter if you're thinking about getting a helmet goggle combo. With that being said, we're going to get into a token of the show, which is hot takes. Uh, first one we always ask is the uh, Michael Jordan and or goat, however you want to call it, of snowboarding. Uh, both male and female. Who you got? Who's your goat? I think I got to throw it to the weef. Wow. Woo. I mean, I love everything that dude does and seeing his work ethic and th- his creativity and what he can come up with. It's a different mind. It's really cool. Yeah. It, it's cool to say it because I feel like we're in the, we're in the Lewif era, but yeah. then it's going to be one of those ones like 10 years from now. It's gonna. He's, his body of work is gonna. He's it's gonna insane. Be like, yeah, it might yeah. expand to yeah. some. Different he's got like things the, the or he's the, looking back on a hybrid street stuff. He's got like the doing. Benedict complex, just like creative and so much. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, great. I love that. I love that answer. What about female? Uh, I'm gonna have to go Desiree. Oh wow, love yeah. it. Great friend of mine. Awesome stuff. Always stayed true to what she wants to do and how she does it. So I admire that. Okay, who's the most underrated in your opinion? Maybe my buddy Tyler Verrigan. He had a shot at snowboarding, and he just didn't like the way the, I think the industry worked. But he's super talented and really good. Close friend of mine still. Yeah. You know, you probably went on some trips. Oh, with yeah. Him. He's, dude, incredibly talented. Yeah. It came easy to him. It came very easy to him. Yeah. Still does. I go snowboarding with him probably a couple times a month now. Okay. Yeah. We always like to ask, if you could go heliboarding just for fun with three people, who would you bring? <laughs> oh, God. Heliboarding. I'd bring my buddy Shane for sure. ABSD. Yeah, ABSD. Hmm. <coughs> Heli, dude, I don't even know if I could heliboard. <laughs> you can make turns. Just, just me and Shane, dude. We'll get down the mountain. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Maybe my buddy Alex. I, I bring seats. my buddy Alex, too. Alex Burton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we could probably just watch back and watch him do something crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Killer. Yeah. Okay, what about the worst trend? What worst do you got? trend in snowboarding? That's so easy for me. Dropping in on spots. Dude, that's got to stop. It's so weird, dude. Like strapping in, and like it's worse than soap shoeing. At least soap shoeers like run up to the rail and like jump on. <laughs> so we- what it's about weird, what about bomb dude. drops? Bomb drops are fine. Nice. I can I can get back on that. You're saying strapping in on yeah. a rail, dude. Like strapping down. on top of a ledge and like scoot yourself to the to, to the like <laughs> slope. How do people do that? People do it. Why do they? Do I that? don't know why they do it. They like shot. They put it as a clip. I'm like, well, that's not a clip. Yeah. It's like just ruining your board for no reason. Uh, <laughs> Like your buddy, it'd be look cooler if your buddy grabbed you by the waist and like Push threw you on it. Threw you on it. <laughs> like it's so weird. Like where do you start the clip? You're like, okay, I'm gonna do two scoots and then I'm going down. <laughs> it's not a trick, and I see it more often than not now. It's, well, it's weird because in our era it wasn't a trick, but now all of a sudden like the light bulb's gone off where it's a trick. But. It's not a trick. <laughs> I don't care. Jump from the beginning. I know we can't ollie, but like you can you can bunny hop on or whatever they, we call it. 
Come on, the love drop it. in thing. This is one hell of a rant. <laughs> it's I an love amateur. It. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, well, <laughs> the the other thing I got to ask, I guess we kind of asked a little bit, but what's what's next for Nick Dirks? What do we got on the horizon? Uh, I'm gonna keep tattooing, keep living in Oregon, friends and family are out there, and more snowboarding because I'm gonna start teaching my daughter how to snowboard. She turns three in April. Uncle Shane bought her a little Burton riglet board, so and she's been asking to go snowboarding recently, so. Teach, teach the youth how to snowboard and have fun with it. That's the, my main goal. How are you loving being a dad? It's pretty awesome, man. I have a little sidekick now. <laughs> it's, it's, it has its waves, you know, and like they're temperamental and then they're super sweet, but it's kind of awesome. It's like this little psychopath and then this little sweetheart. It's cool. It's fun. <laughs> Before we wrap this thing up, do you want to throw any thank yous? Uh, yeah, I'll throw some thank yous. Uh, first to my family. It's always supported me, my friends, my close friends, anybody that's ever supported me with snowboarding whether it's support the companies that I'm affiliated with, companies that put me on, and also people that still support me with art and my tattoos and even just want to listen to this episode. I think it's it means a lot, and it's keeping me going, which is I'm very thankful for. And an, another way that, I don't know if people know this, but they, you can buy uh, prints of yeah. your tattoo stuff. Where do they find that? Uh, directly through my Instagram. I have like a big cartel set up with T-shirts and prints, and you can make an appointment with me through that as well. So. That's at Dick Nerks. Yeah, Dick Nerks. Dick yeah. Nerks. Beautiful. Creative name there. I like yeah, that. Just a quick <laughs> letter swap. You know, It's funny. People will come to my appointments and be like, is Dick here? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> at the tattoo shop, too, like, uh, the sign painter came, and he, uh, I wasn't there at work that day, and he like painted everyone's name in like, gold leaf on the window. And then he found out my name wasn't actually Dick. And he was like, dude, I'm so sorry. He's like, I painted your name to say Dick. I was like, that's fine. I, I love it. It's like cursive. This is Dick on the window. I'm like. <laughs> great that's Amazing. awesome well nick i just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show it's been that's been a fun one yeah thank you guys that was so awesome yeah memory Appreciate lane it. hell yeah and i want to say thank you to all of our sponsors all of our listeners anybody that's ever bought a piece of merch uh this whole snowboard community you guys rule so uh thanks again and we'll see you next week we are over and out from the bomb hole thank you